Hello. Hi. <laughs> we had like seven, now we're down to four. Uh, hello everyone, welcome to part two of every frame of pause episode 100, 20, 20 million hour stream. This is what, hour 12-ish? Um, we welcome Mr. Mr. Wolf, how you doing there, sir? I'm doing pretty good. Excellente. Uh, Mr. Fringy, always nice to see you. Hello. <coughs> And of course, down with thrust. How are you, sir? How was your day? Uh, it was good. And uh, congratulations on the hundredth episode. Yeah, of man. Fine podcast. It's um, it's been crazy because they're all like a million hours long each. <laughs> so finally, get I wonder when you sleep. Yeah. Also, as some may have already noticed, Rags is mysteriously missing. Um, any second he may be back. Worst case scenario, he fell asleep. Best case scenario, he'll be <laughs> any minute. He wakes uh, up eight hours later. Hey, sorry, what I missed. What's well, up? See, the good part of that though is that he can he can be the hype man while I slowly stagger and fall asleep in the background. So it'll be great. Right. Um. But yeah, you know, we 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 don't need to. We're not really going to be covering anything for a little bit. We're just going to have a a nice little chat. You know, uh, chill out. Just ask all of the questions because I mean, uh, after those, uh, especially after those those cooking videos, uh. Uh, you cool with you cool, me calling your Tone? Is, is that alright? Yeah, um, so the story behind... My name is Tony, by the way, obviously. Shit. Probably many people thought about that. Anyway, I was, was working at uh, this cell phone store, and uh, this the manager I had at the time, he gave me... He bestowed onto me the name Tone Loak, so it just kind of carried through. Not nice. my real name, but I go by either or. Yeah, I mean, it works. Um... I mean, I was just gonna say the the easy question to go off like, what what got your passion going for cooking? Because man, you're good at it. Um, my starvation as a kid. <laughs> <laughs> I uh, grew up in a family of five five kids. Hey, Rags. <laughs> you want to answer? <laughs> <laughs> oh my God, hey, Rags. Hello. Yo, hello. Uh, Where the fuck have you been? Rags, meet uh Tone. Tone, meet Rags. Hello. Hi. Hi there. Hello. All uh, right. Great to hear from you in the live. Mm. It's great to meet you over the internet. That's that's what the best we can do for now. Um. But yeah. He's just he was just regaling us with uh, how all this cooking stuff got started. So go ahead. Yeah. Well, oh, yeah, like cool. um. So when I was a kid, like my mom and dad divorced when I was like ten, and um, he had the job she didn't kind of thing. She never went to college, so she took all five kids and um had no job she was broke we ended up living like in a trailer long story short um we didn't have a lot of money and we had five kids so i pretty much never got to eat as as a kid so <laughs> like my mom would make like the, the the classic hamburger helper for for dinner you know the the noodles with the the ground beef you know the five dollar meal for 10 people mm -hmm. and like if you weren't first to the table you you didn't get seconds because there were so many fucking kids mm. So as I got older, um, Food Network exploded when I was like a teen. And it wasn't just like the classic like restaurant tour doing like the demo on TV via like Epicurious or something like that. It was like the celebrity chef, you know, the, the Bobby Flay came into the picture. So I kind of like it was a combination of being always starved as a kid or starving as a kid. And then like um, watching like the celebrityism develop with food like on the side while other kids were like watching like Saved by the Bell like I was rocking like Iron Chef so yeah. it's kind of like it's kind of like how I got started and of course I had my grandma in the kitchen you know trying to sneak the the little taste of the tomato sauce before she'd whack me in the face kind of thing we had a very close-knit family <laughs> although we were very poor <laughs> so like it was was it like making as much as you could of the ingredients you had at hand sort of thing you had to learn how to sort of change them up and stuff yeah, I mean, um, I actually recall fond memories of uh, food stamps, actually, at one point. So we were pretty poor, actually. And my mom would send me to the store with the old food stamps. And she'd say, you got $20 in food stamps. You got to get food for the rest of the week. So I just go down there and get a whole bunch of stuff. And then my mom and I would just make dinner for the whole family for like seven days, pack it up in little little packages so everyone would have you know food in the fridge. But at the end of the week, we pretty much have no food. 
I mean, making the most so of it, right? Really, it was shit. like, yeah, I was about to say, basically just learning by necessity. And not only, yeah. like, learning how to cook good, but also cook a lot. Like, it's, it's a pretty good combination of skills, I would say. Oh, we, we made some trash, for sure. Some goulash. <laughs> right. Mom, I, got, I got 20 cokes, Mom. Will this work? <laughs> <laughs> I got a bag of flour and some chocolate, Mom. <laughs> Did you like so? What? When you were, when you were buying this shit, we, we we sort of like I want to mix it up this week. I want to buy some stuff we haven't used before. No, no. My mom would give me like a list, you know, the old uh, ten ten item list, and then I'd have to figure out how to squeeze like a uh, olive oil, cereal, pancake bix, mm. all this crap. I'd have to find some way to to get it under twenty bucks. So like that's how I learned how to cook on a budget. Obviously, the show is kind of like about like restaurant style food and like lavish elegant yeah, food but like my roots come from very poor like family style peasant food well that's a I was, humble I, way I, of getting up there yeah starting yeah. from nothing and getting to where you're at now i mean your food looks genuinely excellent yeah, restaurant style high quality stuff is definitely what i'd call it to the point where i'd even say it's um uh, i don't want to say like it's really, um, I'd say, beyond the level most people could probably do. It's sort of its own thing. It's surpassed the the everyday person um, kind of level. It's really up there. Really, I can make uh, macaroni. Really that's that's my level. <laughs> I could make toast. <laughs> I can burn toast. Well, I mean, like the the truth of the matter is, I don't eat like that. Like that's just kind of like the special occasion stuff, right? I eat very like. I imagine as I said, like, what your low tier stuff is like, would be godlike to us as well. We'd be like, whoa! <laughs> You're just like I'm just putting it together. I don't know what you mean. What can you do with a can of beans? <laughs> I actually fucking hate beans. So oh thing. no! Oh, you and, <laughs> all, you and me both, beans, man. I guess every them. kind. Like I was in Chipotle this one time, and oh. you know, you, you guys don't got Chipotle in Europe. No, uh, but. Or, I know what it is though. It's like you know a, what it is, they have spicy though, right? shit there, right? It's it's like Americanized. Me you got you, you got you, sh you sure as fuck you got beans. So like, <laughs> I go up there to order my burrito, <laughs> and like, it's it's kind of like for those who don't know what Chipotle is, you basically walk up to the counter, and uh, you, you they make the burrito in front in front of you. So I wasn't watching this chick that was making it one time. I gave her clear instructions because she wasn't listening. And then there she goes dumping beans into my fucking burrito and uh, just stared at her aghast, disgusted. Don't put beans in my food. So this yeah, is post the, bean the natural <laughs> I thought this would be the, the origin story for hating the beans. Yeah. <laughs> oh, no. No, that would be the, the campfire. Someone in the chat probably knows. What is the... The do the commercial with the dog, the beans. Oh, bushes, it. baked beans. Yeah, man. We were so poor. I was I told you guys earlier I was poor. We were so poor. We'd we would eat bushes baked beans on fishing trips. If we caught no fish, guess what was for dinner? Beans. Oh my god. Now that, that's where my hatred for beans, among other things. Uh this is where my makes those fishing trips pretty fucking fish. High stakes, Jesus. Yeah, that rainbow trout. Fuck, I'd eat pike rather. No, actually, I don't know if I'd rather eat pike than beans. Pike is pretty disgusting. Well, doesn't the UK, don't you guys have like a lot of, or maybe it's Norway, you got like a lot of fish dishes, like dried fish, Mahler. Uh, I mean, yeah, we like we like a lot of fish related dishes over and over in Britain. I was gonna say I'm 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 okay with beans. I'm on team beans to to a degree. You know, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna shout from the heavens for them, but you know, beans are cool. I'll keep them in uh, yeah. in backup. They're all right. I mean, the, the Weezer had that album, uh, Pike and Beans. <laughs> yeah, Pike and Beans. Um, yeah. fish and chips is of course one of the uh, cultural exports we have over in Britain. It's one of the things people people come to our isles just for the fish and chips. Exquisite, you might even say. But um, yeah, I I was curious about the um, the the rabbit. I'm I'm assuming the answer is no, but I thought it was anyway. Do you do any uh, hunting at all, or is uh, do you get it all from like a butcher and stuff? No, I am completely 100% non-hunter. I hate zoos, animals in captivity. Wow, you hate zoos? <laughs> I hate really? Zoos. I don't yeah. like the exploitation zoos are... of animals. 
at all. Zoos are kind of shitty places. <laughs> well, there's a difference between like um, a natural habitat or like a, um, you know, where do they have those like sanctuaries? Like for wounded animals. I know what you're talking about. You're talking about like the big sort of uh, zoos that they can sort of free roam around and they try to approximate like the habitat and they live in social groups, you know, like groups. Yeah, and it's it's hard to uh, cohabit or rehabitate those uh, those animals into the wild because they've been put in those. those... There's a difference between that and, and zoos is what I'm saying. Zoos is commercialization. Mm-hmm. That is, it seems to be driven by a certain amount of goodwill. Maybe it's just my own personal experience, but the couple zoos I've been to have been like really bad shitholes. Granted, one of them was the Detroit Zoo, so that's kind of a given that it's going to be a shithole. But uh, <laughs> yeah, I mean, you had animals like walking out of their cages, and the people working there just didn't give a shit. Free what? range, free range zoos. <laughs> Could yes. you imagine a free range zoo? You walk through the front gate, you see like a lion chasing down. <laughs> like, yeah, they, from... they already bought their tickets. Remind me of Tiger you see, King. Like, you see like the monkeys like sitting in their own shit. It's like, it's sad. They're like super sad. They're super depressed. They're in fucking cages. It's like no way to live. Any anyway. penguin exhibit is fucking depressing. You go in there, it's like all fake ice. You see the shit collecting on the bottom of their little pool. It smells awful in there. It's like it's just really fucking disgusting. Fly them back out That's to Antarctica, true. please. Anyway, no, the, to, to circle back, Mauler. No, I'm not a I'm not a hunter. Um, what, so like weird question. I don't know how to phrase it, but like, what what kind of stuff do you know how to cook animal wise? Because obviously the rabbit. But what's uh, so what looking at? So the rabbit was was tough to get actually. Like finding that rabbit. And like the COVID system, oh, right, yeah, was like nigh on impossible. Interesting, considering like, there were like 10 billion rabbits like, in the world. <laughs> I should have just so easy. This gun just gets grabbed my shotgun. Rabbit. Yeah, head to the nearest field and, and gun one down. But no, like finding the <laughs> rabbit was <laughs> come here, bunny. But no, like the, the finding the actual rabbit was a freaking nightmare. I had to like go to like another city to like this. It wasn't even like a butcher. It was like a was this huge, like they were like breaking down entire animals, like from not like a slaughterhouse, but like huge pieces of meat. Like you go to a butcher, you'll, you'll you know, you might find like like a venison loin, but you're not going to see like the venison hanging from the chains being cut down. You know what I mean? So like someone maybe like a hunter would go out and they'd shoot a deer or something and then they'd bring the deer to this person and they dress it and get it all ready and that sort of thing. Yeah, I mean, there's like two, two there's two different types of like of butcheries. So you have like the, the butcheries where the 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 butcher will import the the product mm-hmm. that's pre pretty much pre sliced or pre cut or whatever. Then there's actually butcher. Well, I guess there's three. The second type of butcher would be the butcher that imports bigger slabs of, of meat and then cuts them down themselves, packages them and sells them. Then you have what you're talking about, which is what Disney um, did to Star Wars. Yeah. If that <laughs> and <laughs> if you like hunt a deer, you can find like a someone to take your animal to and they'll actually break it down. Uh-huh. They don't they don't actually sell commercialized meat. They'll they'll just you know break down your shit for you. Yeah, I could imagine a like I'm, I'm in Arkansas and there's a lot of hunting that goes around here. So I imagine there's quite a few places like that. that would be more than happy to, you know, get your deer already. Take care of your meat. Get your meat. You bring them, we slash them. Yeah. The, the, um, rabbit episode was actually supposed, well, that was like my second take third take. Actually, we were planning to do venison and then I completely fucked it up. <laughs> I fucked up the first episode and then we refi- refilmed it, which took like seven hours, by the way. And then right. the camera like died. work went into it. The camera fucking died oh, as we were doing it died. Not like at the start, not like two hours in, right as we we're getting like the money shot plating, you know, that the iconic shot that everyone <laughs> wants to see. Uh-huh. It dies. Oh. And for some reason, I don't know why. Uh, there's no indicator on the camera I use, so we just kept on filming and uh, gathered up all the footage later on, and then realized we didn't uh, have that good old fashioned money shot, so we had to can it. Went back to the butcher. They're out of innocence, so then we switched to the rabbit. 
Which one was better? Oh, uh, the rabbit for sure. I had never had it before, and um, it was my first time cooking it, so it was it's kind of like a challenge to me and the, something really cool to do too. So rabbit is uh, you 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 like the taste of rabbit better than venison? Um, I mean it tastes like chicken, and I I I, I do fancy the rabbit does. chicken. Huh. It tastes exactly like chicken. Nice. I mean I paid like forty dollars for this tiny little rabbit one stinking rabbit it exactly <laughs> like chicken dude <laughs> it's jumpy chicken <laughs> it's well, the attitude no of the animal because you hear people say that all the time and it tastes just like chicken but i don't i think if i had to name an animal that the the animal that isn't chicken that tastes closest to chicken i think is actually alligator I was just going to say that too. That's what? what I heard. <laughs> yeah. I, know, I actually, knew I wasn't though, crazy. Not out al- crocodile, dude. Okay. You get your I'm out of the loop. Why is straight. an alligator or a crocodile close to a chicken taste wise? Is that just a. Just, what? Well, no, I in America. Because oh, right, dinosaurs <laughs> and, and birds. No, no, I'm not. <laughs> no, like, no, no say I, I'm pretty sure that I'm. Um, say it. I just said it. Okay. Say it again. Say it again. There is too much interference. Uh, you have to say it yeah, again. All right. No, no, no. Okay. Yeah. All right. Or, <laughs> I'm just trying to explain my point. Um, I'm pretty sure that aren't birds descended from dinosaurs and crocodiles are basically dinosaurs. So uh, there you go. Yeah, dinosaurs eventually became birds. I don't think. Cro- um, yeah. yeah. What are you? Crocodiles, not. They're a whole but different I think thing. Yeah, no, I, I think the crocodiles are like just... related to dinosaurs. I'm pretty sure they no, are. I thought, I thought they were related to each other. I thought it was just that they've been around for fucking ages, isn't that the thing? I, that yeah, on. crocodiles have been around for a long time. I think that's just because. Welcome to our podcast, by the way. We're talking, about... <laughs> <laughs> but, but uh, I, I think it's just coincidental because there probably would have been a lot of changes, you know, between the dinosaur chicken stage. In what um, the crocodiles and alligators have been hanging out. Uh, I'm not. I'm not sure that that's. Uh, although birds may be the only modern dinosaurs that this is from um, the Canadian Broadcasting Corporation. Can't be trusted. <laughs> like, um, they're you apparently getting news from Canada. Stop well, it. This is the first link that came up. Modern crocodiles no. and alligators <laughs> are almost unchanged no. from their ancient ancestors. From Get the a new link. Period. No. Well, no, no, that makes sense. Yeah, if if the crocodiles and the alligators are unchanged, then they might have shared a common ancestor, but they wouldn't. Yeah. One wouldn't have been descended from the other. Oh, maybe not. But yeah, if crocodiles for, I mean, and alligators if, if, like, become birds, birds. Yeah, but if it's the idea that like birds, because you know turkeys and chickens are not the same, but they taste similar, and you know, so if if that's the case, then surely there's like and duck as well, right? So like if if that's the case, and then yeah. Animals belonging oh. to a similar group taste similar. Maybe Total that's duck. just one of the duck. Let me you like duck? Straight. Let me set this state straight. <laughs> duck <laughs> does not taste like chicken at all. Yeah, it doesn't. I was about. That's why I was uh, asking because right. I really like duck, but it doesn't taste like chicken. It tastes great though. Through I like again. it. There's My mom doesn't like nothing. That that a duck out of the loop. I've never, never evolved from a crocodile either. Well, I'm not no, saying no, they, they evolved they from crocodiles. That's not what no, I'm they saying. Didn't. Like, yeah, they're they, different they didn't. animals. Yeah. yeah. They don't taste like <laughs> dinosaurs. <laughs> wait, what? Well, how, wait, wait, wait. How do you know what dinosaurs taste like? Nobody knows what dinosaurs taste like. Well, they did. They found engravings to describe the taste of dinosaurs. Okay, guys? That's how we go. Engravings. From other <laughs> dinosaurs, they wrote it down. <laughs> Though, seriously, wouldn't it be cool to taste a T Rex? Just be like, I want to try that shit. Just to see what it's like. Thus tasting power. Obviously after it's just died of natural causes. No need to butcher the animal just for the taste, you know? I heard predatory animals don't taste as good as like herbivores. Yeah, and that's oh. uh that's so what, from what, what he's talking yeah. about. I'll tell you why that's true. I'll tell you why that's true. Well let me let me <clears throat> let me replace the word herbivores with um like hunters and hunted, right? So the why game meat or like predators and game taste good? Like let's say venison or like whatever kind of game meat you're talking about is because those fucking animals are running for their for their lives all day long out there in the wild. So they they build up this crazy like enzyme structure within the meat. I saw it on Joe Rogan at one point. You can go look it up. But 
it's a system so you of want like not being afraid. like the mess. Oh, I, I I get you. Right? Like in, <laughs> the, in the less that- domesticated you are, eating cornmeal crap, you know, <laughs> rolling around in your own shit, the better you should taste. Obviously. Ah. Do you right. think it also we has something to do with like their diet too? I sure. assume so. Hmm. Hmm. Grass, <laughs> the diet of grass. So well, it, grass is what makes different from like just so eating good. like a carnivore just eats meat. Yeah. Have you seen so, like again? Am I the only person who's seen the Tiger King documentary? By the way, out of us five, I haven't seen it. I haven't seen it. Well, what, what is it? Tiger King. It's like a Netflix documentary, but they show like it's just a bunch of tigers that Captain made money off. It's it's pretty horrible on their end, but it's also insane documentary. Crazy shit happens, but they they comment on like how they. They take all of like the expired meat from loads of different supermarkets, and that's where they feed the lions. Where they just shove it into like a big van, and it's just all these different kinds of meat, and it's just like plopped into their uh, their pens. So I wonder if I wonder if that makes a difference, like fed higher grade or higher value quality, even cooked meat versus just like raw random shit from supermarkets and stuff. It reminds me of uh, this documentary called The Cove. Anyone seen The Cove? No. No, I haven't. I haven't even from... heard of that. Dude, great, great documentary. It'll make you pissed off, but it's really good. No, oh, what's it about? <laughs> it's it's about these these dolphins that are kept in captivity in the small upset. island. Yeah, like dolphins. Come on, man. Everyone loves dolphins. Yeah, but these people butcher these dolphins for commercialized meat. Jeez. Then they take the dolphin meat. And repackage it and label it as tuna. So you think it'd be way more expensive to kill a dolphin and sell it as tuna than not true because dolphins really? are cool and they just kind of like come up to you. Okay, dolphin, Aww. come here. And, you know, swimming oh, oh dolphin. damn. That's really? Really? Come to me sad. as I hoist this giant spear at your face. Wow. Oh. And then the like the entire <laughs> indigenous population now has like mercury poisoning you know because dolphins and sharks they have a high concentration of mercury in their blood which makes the the meat the flesh really dark like tuna it's fucked up Ooh, yeah that's mm. right. that is very strange i have no idea please don't tell me that happens often now i don't have to see the documentary and i don't want to <laughs> yeah just make sure you double check that hamburger meat I'm on mm. the store I don't think I've eaten an animal that I didn't like. Was that called the Cove? You said the Cove. Yeah. Where can I watch that? Is that on like Netflix or HBO? I think it was a Netflix. You know, they've got some really good documentaries. Um, Blackfish is good. It's about. I've uh, um, I've seen Blackfish. That's a sad one as well. That one pissed me off, dude. The basically the shutdown of SeaWorld because they were killing. Great white sharks. Wait, not great white sharks. Um, Orcas? Killer whales? Orcas. Yeah, killer whales. And another one that's really good you guys should check out is The Wire. You seen that? The show The Wire. The Wire, the show? No, it's this fascinating documentary where these two people climbed the, and obviously in the past, the um, two towers. Well, everything happened in the past. Yes, for I don't want to harp on the, the sentiment regarding it, but they climbed the two towers at one point and shot a cable, I think, out of like oh, a bow and arrow what you're about. across the two towers and then walked oh, yeah, across I know this. it. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. I, I I've know heard of this. Maybe. I haven't watched it, but I have heard of it. That's it's the a one big with a uh, nope from got, me. Um, oh, damn it. Everyone say it, Man name. on Wire. Is that what it's called? That's it. Wait, man. I, yeah, that is it. Yeah, yeah. It's. I it, remember. Like, yeah, wow. I, I remember this distinctly. By the way, uh, Chris Stuckman did a review of this movie, and he said, "I'm not going to spoil whether or not he makes it across the wire." <laughs> and a minute later, he references the fact that they consulted with the guy who did that. <laughs> <laughs> hey, hey, he could have fallen and been okay. <laughs> <laughs> Doesn't the entire movie have? Interviews with the guy who climbed it. What about well, this? I, I, I think his whole thing was he, wasn't, he didn't want to spoil whether or not he made it. I oh. guess making a movie about a guy who falls to his death is not like it's a bit of an anti climax. But... Hey, he might have been talking to his force ghost. You don't know. Yeah. 
Chris Stuckman. I'm not going <laughs> to spoil it one minute later. Spoils. Yeah. It just makes you wonder, or I mean, it's just, it dawns on you like what humans can do. That's they can be crazy. Really cool. Oh, yeah, they're crazies. Good old so humans. The chat said, You died. I got better. <laughs> Besides the people who put animals in zoos for profit, it's amazing what people can do. Mm -hmm. oh, I just I was curious because I was like I do remember blackfish they they like um, their fins flop over eventually because uh, they just like break they can't work them properly because of the space confinements and stuff. It was like one of the first. It's things actually, that yeah, um, it's actually not about the physical structure of the tank or lack there of space. It's this weird. I mean, I hate this. I mean, I guess this is kind of spoiling it, so you close your ears if you're gonna watch it, but. Um, it's something happens in their brain while they're in captivity that makes them go like loco, like crazy. Yeah. And they literally commit like suicide in the tank because they can't like live a life wild. It, so I mean, it's, it's like crazy. depression then, or is it different from that? I'm not a scientist, but, um, uh, seems like it to me. It is. It's one of the many documentaries. When you watch, it, you're like, "Oh dear, this this needs to stop. This has to go. Like, we gotta rethink this shit." It's weird because the Sea World, I at one point lived across the street from, and I was there as they shut it down and they remade it into it was like Sea Kingdom or or something. They basically took away all the sea creatures, the whales, the huge aquariums with the killer whales. Uh, due to government regulation, he basically came in there, slapped them on the ass, and said, hey, man, you can't do this no more. And then they pretty much, just like a video game remaster, they remastered the theme park, and they put a whole bunch of roller coasters in it. Well, hmm. better to have roller coasters than orcas. Yeah, at least the only risk is humans dying. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah at, at least that, you got to be ready to... You ever seen those pictures of those humans that are riding the roller coaster and the fucker stops when they're upside down? Uh, <laughs> um, pretty scary. Yeah, we're having a little bit of maintenance issue. I'm just gonna be about three and a half hours. Just sit tight. Oh man, I don't know what uh what roller co what the roller coaster is called, but at Cedar Point, there's this roller coaster that just goes really high up and then you go down. It's like not complicated. It's literally just one hill, and it's like I think the tallest roller coaster there. And it kept breaking down like 10 times while we were there. And then my dad was like, let's ride this one. And I was like, I don't know if I want to ride the one that keeps breaking down. There's like the repairman sitting on the side with <laughs> he's all washed up, wants to go home, greasy beard. He's got the screwdriver in his hand trying to fix. <laughs> That's a, it's a good vote of confidence. Let me go ahead and step up. Yeah, I did ride it. It was like five or felt like five seconds. It was fun uh, not the most fun i had there but it was always like oh uh, i don't know if i want to be riding the one that keeps breaking that's a valid concern <laughs> oh, that thrill makes it more fun do you guys have a lot of theme parks in uh the uk oh well Smaller? um yeah we got like thought park and uh well most of the time we just we venture out of our little island when we want to go to like the better ones and stuff um i've uh I've only heard of Thorpe Park because of the in-betweeners. <laughs> yeah. But, um, oh, you know, it's funny because in my head I was just like, what do you mean, COVID? <laughs> we're, like, we're not allowed yeah. to go anywhere, it's just spooky. But, uh, yeah, when things are um, a little bit more in function. You got the Disneyland Paris as well, which is pretty close by. You can drive there when you go under the bridge of spooky. How? You can't drive over on water? You can. You Freeze it about? like a sorcerer. <laughs> <laughs> like that scene from the Polar Express movie. Or, uh, or Frozen. Yeah, how's that? That's a reference. <sighs> what? No. Frozen? Wait, what do you- wait, what? I- what, In Frozen there was a train on- on ice. <laughs> what? <laughs> <laughs> when you're only half paying attention, you can buy the shit. <laughs> <laughs> yes, Fringy, the Polar Express cameoed in Frozen. <laughs> It was um, around the halfway point. Well, it no, splattered, I mean, in, in splattered the one of the like, characters. I was about to say the Frozen Express. The Polar Express wasn't made <laughs> of ice. <laughs> I said an ice train. 
Um, so oh, a, everyone's in chat saying frozen. Frozen. <laughs> um, <laughs> so here's a question. What is everyone's opinion on cooked carrots? I love them. They're great. <gasps> mm. So good. I love them. What is the what was the method of cooking? <laughs> it's very important. See, yes. you've already lost me. <laughs> cooking. Uh, <what> do you <laughs> mean? <laughs> Does a flamethrower count? Boil Damn. them. Are you boiling them? Are you roasting them? Stick them in a stew. <laughs> I've put. Well, I've I've had them in like stews and stuff. If you put a carrot in a, a pot of boiling water and then hand it to me, I will throw it in the trash. <laughs> wow. Wow. Let me write that down. Okay. We will. We will. I'm, avoid I, it. I boiled this just for you. If I could I add, roll. I, I just want to know why. They so, taste like baby food. You mean like really soft and. Yeah. The way you should cook your carrots is. Roast them. And it makes them crispy and yummy. It's not really about the food sometimes. It's about how you handle the food. Yeah. Like, obviously, you always want to cook with fresh ingredients, but it's how you utilize the ingredient that just determines the final product. I've never actually had roasted carrots. I might have to give that one a try. So I, yeah. I'm worried to ask what your opinion on mashed potatoes is. <laughs> We, like I said earlier, we we're really poor rags, so we ate a lot of mashed potatoes growing up, dude. So that could either mean that you have a, a, a wonderful fondness for them, or you never want to see them again in your life. <laughs> uh, if I would ever make them, it would be like in a different format. I'll just say that. Like, I would never like go out of my way and make mashed potatoes and stuff it into my right. mouth. I'd rather throw up. Oh. <laughs> oh, so it sounds like you hate them then. <laughs> so you could, like, <laughs> if you them up a bit, dice them, them, grill them, at, roast them after that, things like that. Yeah, I mean, yeah. The potato. I, I prefer sweet potatoes because they're healthier. I, oh, okay. I would eat a sweet potato over a potato. Sweet potatoes pretty time. cool. I don't actually like sweet potatoes. I, really? uh, I, 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 I just don't like them. There, there are some foods where I just feel like the sugar isn't, just doesn't have you the sweetness to it. Ever roasted them? Um, I can't remember. Uh, probably not, but I'm not sure. I, Next I time assume, I come across a roasted sweet potato, though, I will give it I a try. I assume your the sweet potatoes that you may be referring to is the classic Thanksgiving. Yeah, the, the sweet potato mash that tastes like candy. It's nasty. Yeah, if it does taste candy like, and that's why I don't like it. Um, and I'm the same way about tea. Is that I don't like sweet tea. Though I am from the South and everyone here has sweet tea, but I just can't, I can't do it. Never, never have liked it. Sugar just doesn't mix with certain things to me. I don't like sweet tea right. either, man. All right. How is the Arkansas? What is the COVID situation down there? If I can ask. Uh, not too much. Everyone's um, more spooked than anything else, but not, not much COVID stuff going on here. Blazes are pretty much open. They just do the reduced capacity. You have to wear a mask, that sort of thing. But it's Dying not indoors or out. Yeah, there's some of that. There's some of that depending really? on the place. Um, but it's not like there. There, there's not lockdowns or things of that nature. It's fairly uh, light. What's the rabbit situation down there, Rex? Lots of them. There are rabbits everywhere here. Every time I walk outside at night, there are rabbits all over the place. Oh, now I've just thought. Have Have I ever told you the story of our? Uh rabbits in australia just <laughs> do they have no, how big are they and yeah. do they attack so, you and well no, ra big, big the idea of that uh that is from monty python and the holy grail where the rabbit just kills everybody well the thing right so rabbits aren't from here um rabbits are an introduced species so the, at, as the story goes there was a guy probably like a hundred or something years ago um who was like Man, it sucks that I can't go hunting rabbits in this country that doesn't have rabbits. I should uh, bring in some rabbits and uh, we'll hunt them. Let's do that. And so he brought 24 rabbits. Um, <laughs> he, 24. he let those 20. Yes. Yeah, I know, right. I'm pretty sure it's 24. Um, he brought 24 rabbits um, and let them loose. 
He didn't get them all. Um, I'm pretty sure there are now 200 million rabbits in Australia. I think wow. that might actually be a gross underestimate. I think there might be more than 200 million. It got That's so rabbits, bad yeah. that they had to build a like 3,000 kilometer long fence in Western Australia to keep them out. So you have first a lot of fences to keep animals the out. And now you have, <laughs> you didn't even bother to fight a war against the rabbits? Well, was the how, you, how does one fight a war against rabbits? Like, I don't know. How, how does well, one when you said they built or... something, I thought you were going to say like a rabbit laser or a rabbit turret. No, they <laughs> they, uh, they built a, a rabbit-proof fence, um, and it's not rabbit-proof. It didn't work. <laughs> it's it's not like the dingo fence. Wait, the wait, dingo wait. fence works. The dingo the fence? <laughs> yeah, no, yeah, oh, did you not know, do you not know about the dingo fence? Well, I know about dingoes. About I didn't know there was a the, the great Australian so, dingo fence. Well, and, and it is it is pretty great. It's uh it's like five thousand kilometers long. It's it's really long, um, and it's success. <laughs> it's a dingo you fence. You understand? You know, ancient China built a wall to keep the Mongols out. Fucking Australia <laughs> builds a fence to keep the rabbits out. <laughs> <and evil cells. laughs> <laughs> it, it worked though. The the dingo fence was successful. There are the, the rabbit the dingo... fence didn't work. Well, well yeah, I, rabbit, I can rabbits were a lot smaller than dingoes. Well, you called it a rabbit proof fence, and the rabbits. I, I didn't call it a rabbit proof <laughs> fence. That's what they called it. That's the actual name of the fence. Oh my when God. I say you, I mean Australia. Uh, well, I didn't name it. I'm just saying. <laughs> the fence got made, and it didn't work. Oh my Fringy's God. on the hook for everything Australia's ever did. <laughs> I do hold him responsible for a lot of Australian things. Let me let me see. I want to I want to double check the actual number of uh, rabbits that we have in Australia now because so I'm pretty what, sure that ju just so you don't drop another bombshell on us. What other fences do you have that are interfacing? Yeah, what about this kangaroo yeah, fence? Like the T Rex uh, fence. <laughs> I imagine oh, the kangaroo yeah. fence has to be extra high. Uh, well, I think um, it's mainly just I like it. it's mainly just these two enormous fences that are thousands of kilometers long. An <laughs> like, elegant solution. Well, uh, yeah. The, the, I just want to highlight as well. I like that the story began with like the rabbit, not originally from Australia, and it's like yeah, anything cuddly and normal is from Australia. <laughs> hey, look. Kangaroos are pretty cuddly. You just don't want to get too close to them, otherwise they'll beat you up. Well, that's you know? the opposite of cuddly, though. If well, you Van Damme, you right? To them. <laughs> um, they are. I mean, cassowaries. That that. Well, you don't want to go near cassowaries, is what I would say. So, what the hell is the cassowary? It's like so, an emu. A cassowary is like an <laughs> emu on steroids. <laughs> so, I don't know what that is. So, okay. Okay. Yeah, okay. Let, let me, let me see so, if I can find a picture. So, if of a you cassowary. inject steroids into a what? Well, <laughs> it's, it's not. It's not actually. It's not actually an emu. It just looks a lot like one. Um, okay, so, uh, Tone, you know, you played Halo Reach, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. oh, oh, my yeah. God. I love that he's you like, where the, is this going? Yes. It, it, so, you know those giant birds in the first mission of Halo Reach? That's essentially what an emu is. Or that. Oh, yeah, that the lowest? Is, we have a picture in the chat. That thing looks... <laughs> Actually, a little bit more prehistoric than the crocodile. Well, oh, hold on. Let me let me let me show you the real picture. The real picture that should uh the this is this is that the... should terrify. I just like the idea that he's like it's yeah. a flupal dag, and you're like, what's that? It's like it's what a in the dangle. absolute sandwich? Is that, <laughs> what uh, in the absolute that, that is, sandwich? That is uh that's a cassowary kicking through a giant metal sheet. You know what that <laughs> reminds me of, dude? That reminds me of uh when canine sh uh, sheriff trainers get the canine to attack him with the glove on. What the yeah. hell is that guy doing? Is that a shield? <laughs> it's, well, <laughs> or is yeah, that like provoke the cassowaries into taking out my shield? Only in Australia do you need a fucking shield against the birds. <laughs> <Have> they, <laughs> that's not just they, a shield. That's like a that's a steel shield. Have they weaponized yeah. the cassowary? Have they have they put it into war yet? <laughs> well, it, it, it's funny, right? Because are, are we arming these things at this point? Well, oh uh, God, don't give them arms, actually, Jesus Christ! Uh, Tone, have you have you heard of the Great Emu War? No, <laughs> it's, it's not very great. Uh, no, yeah. <laughs> no one laughed at Rags's <laughs> joke. Pun no arm, but whatever. wait, what was what was? Thank the you, joke? thank you, Tony. He, he, they they don't have arms, and I was talking. Yeah, about they them. they don't have arms. Yeah, uh, no, it's, well, it's great. But um, I got so, you. <laughs> yeah, the the emu war, the great emu war, took place about a hundred years ago. I think I'm pretty sure it was in the 1920s. Can you it? Um, in the land well, of Australia, so uh, <laughs> give us a fable. Uh, a bunch of a bunch of farmers again in Western Australia were. Uh, 
they didn't like that emus were making things difficult for them, so they launched a campaign against them and lost. You're um, actually <laughs> being serious. Uh, Australia yeah, well, fought it, a literal a war thing. against yeah. a bunch of birds, and they lost. <laughs> it's, it's, it's not that we lost, it's more that we just quit. It didn't work. Nick, oh, okay. Friggy, okay. Friggy, okay. Tell us you were the one it. that just described it as a loss. Well, it was a loss in the sense that we didn't achieve our objective. It was a loss like in the sense did. that we didn't it's win. <laughs> is this it was like a big battle, battle and the Australians just were the defeated battle? and left the field. What, what I mean is that we weren't conquered by the emus, we just kind of we just left them alone. Yeah, yeah, you, just, you just built a fence around yourself to keep the emus from wiping well, no, you we, out. We didn't, we didn't build a fence for the emus because I don't think it would work. You know, the it's aliens in like Independence Day, they didn't work. lose. Well, they just went home. Well, yeah, you, you, you couldn't build an effective fence against rabbits. Of course you couldn't yeah, build we a built, fence. We built an effective <laughs> fence against dingoes, okay? Like, it's pretty good. I mean, you got one thing down. That's I don't that's know, something. I feel like a dingo and a cassowary, or an emu, sorry, are, are on sort of different you know, I levels. agree. Th that looks um, like it could yeah. possibly fly. Well, that that's a uh, cassowary. Emus aren't as uh, hostile. <laughs> I feel like a cassowary could just kick the earth downwards yeah. and then sort of fly as a result. Yeah, what, kind uh, of like, maybe, or just knock it out of its idea. axis. You know, these these things seem powerful, like a Fringy. pole vaulter. Your entire country mm -hmm. is like Jurassic Park in real life. <laughs> what? Hey, look, if you leave them alone, then, you know, it's fine. Yeah, that's that what... sounds like something a loser would say. <laughs> 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 if you leave them alone, they're fine. It's, it's... No, really, like, and kangaroos are, like I said, unless you get really close to them, they're okay. Um, well, it's just like a lot of wildlife. Thing. It's great as long as you're not up close. Yeah, you well, didn't I mean. actually like, tell yeah. us how you they fought against oh, well, the brigade. It, it, uh, right, so... The emus. the emus like they didn't fight it. It's more that the the farmers were unable to successfully curb their numbers. That was their goal, and they couldn't do it. You didn't kill enough. Um, yeah, pr b basically. Um, kind of <laughs> anticlimactic. I was imagining this giant war, well, a giant battle of like a versus emus raiding Perth. <laughs> they gathered up on an empty field. Yeah, the, the and they lined walls, the horizon. Like, the shield wall well, is breached. You and imagine if I... like, um, <laughs> the, battle, the battle of, uh, like, in Lord of the Rings. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Emus on one side. I, one I've fire actually, and will. Like, I've brainstormed ideas of, like, if I were to make a movie, I'd call, I I'd call it World War E, and it would be, World like, War a, e. <laughs> it would be like a serious yeah. war film with, like, dudes with, like, assault rifles and shit going up against emus, and the emus just, like, rip their heads off. I, I thought about this, uh, well, not, not like that, more like, uh, you know, the flashing <laughs> darkness as the emu lunges through and the numbers are getting reduced. <laughs> I would <laughs> just make Saving Private Ryan, only the Nazis are emus. Is it going so, to star Brad Pitt? Well, I mean, it has to, right? Brad well, Pitt is trying to, like, get Isn't that World War Z? Lunger. Yeah, that I, is World War Z. I would Someone start in chat is you, saying Jack. you guys used Lewis guns against emus? <laughs> Yeah, Jesus they did. Like, <laughs> yeah, like, like Tommy guns, which you still lost. Hey, <laughs> look, the emus, they're really. I love the idea that they're using like actual military equipment, <laughs> like, like light machine oh guns. God, and they're yeah. setting up. I can't believe <laughs> you, you used machine guns against birds and you lost. Hey, look, I'm just, you know. <laughs> As he said, well, he didn't lose, he simply didn't win. Yeah, yeah, that's they, what a loser. Just... <laughs> <laughs> well, look, all right. I'm just, I'm just saying, we are uh, the things to do that time. I'm just, like, look, I'm just saying, America would have got the job done. They you know, maybe it's a good thing that Australia took all your guns away because you're clearly not good enough to use them. <laughs> you can't even speak I mean, your email. You can't even win a war against a bunch of birds. No wonder you don't deserve so, guns. Hey, here you, in America, I guess a similar issue that we have is with hogs, wild hogs. Where there's just so many of them, and it's to the point where they let you ride around in helicopters and shoot them. Really? Wow. Yeah. I haven't heard there's... about that law in California, but maybe. Oh, in California, in, maybe in not. Yeah, in a lot of other places you can do that, but probably not in California. They got weird gun laws. But yeah, over it, we're in places where warthogs are really bad. You just shoot as many as you want. Because there's get so many of them. With an M16. Well, if you have an M16, very few people do. But yeah, whatever you've got.
rifles. Um, you need to use a generally for hunting though. You need a, at least a minimum size caliber for certain animals, so you don't just like wound it and maim it. You have to actually use a bullet that'll sufficiently kill them. You know, quick enough. Instantly, but yeah. yeah, generally, so like thirty caliber. That's why a lot of um, like AKs are popular around here because of hogs. Uh, you have to have like thirty caliber in a lot of states in order to uh, kill hogs. What you know what we have in, in Cali? Not warthogs, but we have turkeys, dude. Oh, turkeys! Lots so, of turkeys. A lot of those I got these, days. dude. I got these six gross turkeys that come onto my mulch in the summer every day, and they pluck at my mulch and they tear it up and they throw it on my lawn hmm. and like i go to my neighbor i'm like dude can i shoot this thing he's like i don't know california is kind of conservative you, you can't really touch him and you, you can't really have a gun either <laughs> dude okay, fucking I'm with your mulch that my is entire, not cool uh, that's kind of the thing we had to institute in australia because like historically we didn't we, we were not good at like maintaining the ecosystem here um like it doesn't I mean, seem like they're any better nowadays you oh, just build no. fences and let everything burn to the ground. <laughs> what I mean is, like, uh, for example, there is a, there's an animal called a, a, a quoll. Quolls are actually really cool animals. They're like, uh, like possum predators. So they hunt. They're like hunter possums. Um, Can we and... get another picture, please? Yeah. Oh, they're, they're actually they're really nifty. Hold on. Quoll, quolls. Are now, how cool. how easily can these kill a human? Well, Chat quolls are not that big. Pick. They're like, they're, I don't worry. I, I got I got one for you. So, uh. These are these nifty little fellas. They are they're now like protected because they often get killed by like um. Oh my god, that's adorable! I imagine it would like rip my eyes out and like oh, burn into cool. my Everything uh, looks cute species. except for the claws. It, it is a carnivorous species, but um, don't they're really small, so it's it's okay. Um, actually, they're like parrots sure. and stuff. Well, interestingly, um, ever since the thylacine, which was the Tasmanian tiger, which isn't a, a, a cat, it's like a dog. Um, well, uh, that used to be the largest, uh, I think, um, land-based uh, mammal predator in Australia. But now the tiger quoll is, and it's like a possum size. Um, so it's kind of important that we preserve these little fellas. Because they're like, they're, they're apex predators. They are the apex predators of oh, like... Wow. Awesome. Hell yeah. It's that looks like, like an apex predator to me. The cuter it looks, the more dangerous it is. Australian well, logic. Well, <laughs> I you know, um, but you got like Tasmanian uh devils and they're they're well, they are pretty cool. They, they scream a lot though, or like they they are uh, yeah. <laughs> they, they they scream a lot. Yeah, so, I went on uh, you know, you know, one of those sneak up in the night, even though they can't really do much to you either. I went on Amazon and um, I bought a slingshot to kill these, these right. turkeys because I couldn't buy a gun. And I fucking clocked one in the head <laughs> and it just walked away. Dude, I feel like the fact you saying that there's going to be art made of you. Like, it just, <laughs> it just walked like... away and it came back the next day. Oh. I mean, well, you got to hit them twice, maybe three times. I don't know. I'll get the message Try eventually. Try a break next time. Or a knife. I, I actually saw these this flock of turkeys actually when I was driving recently, and um, if it wasn't for my dogs in my car, I would have swerved off the, the damn road and just clobbered them. But your dog, I don't know, seatbelt. Oh, the dog wasn't buckled up. <clears throat> I don't traditionally buckle up my dogs. Oh no, I, I yeah, I was I was at at the at the start I was confused as to what difference the dog made. And then I was like, oh, the dog was in the car and you didn't want the dog to get you know hurt if you went off road. Always clarified. I had this I would have definitely soccer mommed them at the soccer mom them. <laughs> I would have at the very least. The <laughs> Come to America, soccer mom the turkeys. <laughs> I'm gonna have to steal that. Just refer to hitting things on the road, soccer momming it. <laughs> while, while we're on the subject of animal, I like how it's just me bringing up all these Australian animals. Have you? Uh, so, is it common for like what? What's the biggest bird in uh in America? Is it? I thought you were going to ask if it was common for people to lose wars against birds. <laughs> I, well, well, uh, is, we haven't is, lost any wars against the poultry. Yes. 
No, I, I feel yeah, we, we tend to win. Well, I mean, how do you know that, uh, like, California condors haven't secretly infiltrated your government and are ruling everything? Because they have a peace them. with the condors. Well, I, I, in any case, the, the question I was trying to ask <laughs> before we went on the test is, uh, what's the biggest um, bird that you have? Is it the condor or the bald eagle? Uh, I think the Californian condor is the biggest bird in North America, but I'm not sure. That's purely... Yeah. I mean, I just Googled it. Apparently, it's the golden eagle. Really? The golden okay. eagle. So With a wingspan topping seven feet, golden eagles are the largest hunting birds in North America. Okay, so they are... All 50 of them. Their length hmm. is 66 centimeters to 100 centimeters. Okay, let me look up... <laughs> I'm pretty sure the wedge tailed eagle has a wingspan of three meters. Hold on. I'm pretty I need to sure read. all of the American birds are, are damn near extinct, unfortunately. Well, I know Poachers. condors really are hard to find, from what I understand. I think they're like ravines. Right. I heard it somewhere. Oh, dude, actually, here we go. <laughs> so, <laughs> but I, these These guys have like massive le oh they're like nobody knows what centimeters is yeah get on the rest of the world's level it's a wedge tailed <laughs> eagle <laughs> it's a wedge tailed eagle <laughs> thing looks like it wants to kill me well it well, is it's from australia yeah, so uh, it's it's three meter wingspan so you can't why do i feel like those things would like carry nuclear bombs across the country <laughs> <laughs> Coalition of all Australian birds launching a war against the world. Like, you you shoot me, I drop the bomb. Is this what you want? Drop bombs, <laughs> and then, like, you got these little amphibious landing craft to let off the cassowaries and the emus. They tried go, to build go, a fence, go. but they couldn't get it high enough. Wow. Well, uh, that well, could be the, the sequel to World War E, just World War A. It's like right Resistance War A. a. War for Australia. <laughs> Guys, we need the funding. We have to. Get this thing higher. Come on. Just build a dome around your cities and like pretend the rest of Australia doesn't exist. I like the idea that there's That's such amazing uh, eagles in, in Australia or whatever that they can go to space. That's just like a thing they can do. <laughs> <laughs> It'll be eagles like that. The space, sir. Damn it. Or like <laughs> space, space birds, like, you know, Rick and Morty with space snakes. They just hunt in space. <laughs> You're telling me that there's a bird that could go to space and you still can't fucking build a fence to keep some rabbits out? <laughs> a bird that goes to it's space. like every factoid about your country makes me think no, very I much less. Think but there are no birds in space. What do they breathe? Like, what? How would they get to space? They and how would they get back without burning up? Elon Just Musk has can... probably figured that out by now. Yeah, I was going to say, come on, Frank. It's Australia. <laughs> I like that. Some come people say that. Australia's made up, and I'm, I i don't know, the more I hear about Australia, the more that seems like it might yeah. be the case. This doesn't sound Whoa. like a real place. Like, like Free just claimed that apparently they have birds that go to space. Like, what's that about? That I, makes no sense oh, at all. Okay. That's, uh, that's not what I said. <laughs> all right. Everyone it's heard it. It's insane. Free, it's very simple. The birds just put on helmets. Yeah. <laughs> Put on helmets, and then that's that's all they need. They bid helmets. Like, <laughs> they bid scientists they made. Like a, a <laughs> and it's like, all right, we're good to go. I got these weird visualizations of what Australia actually is right now: giant <laughs> birds attacking people with the machine guns. We got walls well, we, all the way up to the sky. Uh, birds fly to the moon. <laughs> what the hell's going on over there? Just birds think hell. That's what it is. They mostly don't attack people. So you <laughs> mostly, yeah, you well, sound I like you. <laughs> It's magpie. I can imagine uh, that just Fergie looking at Ripley and being like, the cute animals don't usually kill people. No, it, well, kill. magpies don't kill people. <laughs> yeah, magpie, we have those here. We have well, some of them. We have we, them here they have Australian yeah. ones, though, rags. They have, like, fangs. Oh, Australian <laughs> magpies, where they, they don't just steal shiny <laughs> objects for the nest. They, like, commit identity theft and <laughs> all, those, all sorts of other crazy Australian versions of stuff. <laughs> Working to crash the stock market as we speak. <laughs> just these birds sitting at their computers buying up futures and, like, and trading stocks to plummet the economy. No wonder my cryptocurrency just went downhill. Yeah. Yeah, it was the magpies. Fucking birds. Damn magpies.
I, I do like that um just a normal standard magpie is more intimidating than magpie from Batwoman. Just like a normal yeah. bird. Batwoman's <laughs> <laughs> afraid of that. I can't believe they brought it back. It's so nuts. It's like, yeah, <laughs> so magpie. Cute. Someone in the chat you, said they mostly come out at night. Mostly. <laughs> mostly? Well, I mean, they're not not well. I think like the majority of Australian animals are nocturnal. Uh, of or, course, like, a large... <laughs> that's just an added bonus. Yeah, they come out at night. Of course, they do because it's Australia. <laughs> <laughs> the fucking flowers are nocturnal over there. <laughs> the flowers. There. Well, I, you have look, to lock I... up your flower bed so children don't <laughs> disappear. <laughs> Like, oh well, my god, they just gave me like Oh, some... they're like the plants from Jumanji, the Robin Williams one. Yeah. <laughs> like the plants are just, they shoot oh, barbs and stuff into your neck. This, like horrible image of like a kid falling into a flower patch and then the flower patch just starts eating the kid. Oh, oh this is terrifying. We need to make this series, this TV show. It's Australia, is it real? And a bunch of people go there, <laughs> like adventurers, and they all get killed one by one in this like horror zone. Every well, I mean, time someone Australia. gets killed by something cute and cuddly, the Terminator theme starts playing. Yeah, because like, it's, it's, yeah. it's like the Lovecraft shit where you go there and everyone's just like weirdly okay, like weirdly normal. Everyone, is just, things are just a little bit off. And it's all the all the stereotypical stuff you hear about, like everyone's saying no and stuff like that. And you're just like, hmm, walking around, not trusting it. And then eventually, you like you see a door that no one's allowed to go into, and you're like, what is this? And it leads to like the real Australia. <laughs> Australia <laughs> two. You hear the distant roar of the T-Rex, you're like, yeah, I do uh, it. It's like the upside down. And well, they push you in yeah. just as you realize it's there, and you're like, no coming I guess, back. Uh, the, the funny thing, right, is the whole idea of, you know, brown snakes, it's pretty obvious why you wouldn't want to go near them, but like platypuses are the ones that are the surprise, I think. I think yeah, uh, they're so cute and cuddly, then they're like, ah, poison barbs! <laughs> well, it, it, it's the whole thing of our platypuses are the alpha males, like, as if you were to have a species of animals, like, platypuses are the most alpha animals that there oh. are. There's ten women platypuses for every one male platypus. That's how competitive they are. I, I love that how you just great. said women platypuses. Women and platy like female? Platypuses. Well, yeah, female platypuses. Women yeah. platypus, yeah. Um, like a woman deer is a doe, yeah. They need a better word, wow. like platypops. Well, I, I, and I'm pretty sure that uh, the plural is not like platypi, it's platypuses. You know, hey, as Frey, to... Well, I, if it's I, 10 to uh, 1, there's a lot of platypuses, I imagine. I got another question for you, Frey, and this is a serious question. So I saw this ad from Australia, and given how cute and cuddly animals from your country tend to kill people, I'm pretty sure this must be true. How many minefields are in your beaches? How many minefields? Oh, what, yeah. do, you, what do you mean? Uh, I mean that there's a an ad from Australia that I saw where a bunch of kids skipped school and they went to a beach and it was a minefield and they all died. No. In the, like, no. Field, you, have you guys never seen this video? No, no I've never seen the video. Oh my god! Well, well, it sounds like we just made that shit up. <laughs> no, I've not. <laughs> okay, we're we're gonna get into a watch together. I'm gonna show you guys this. It's the if greatest commercial you will ever see. If it is, all, you know, all the shit that Freeze has been saying today could have been made up. You don't know. We don't know. Yeah. Oh, yeah, we had a war with the emus, and we have a 5,000-mile-long dingo fence. And like, yeah, none of this is real. You're like, this, this is a really is cool this. book you're writing, I guess. It seems a bit <laughs> yeah. weird, though. Yeah, it seems a little unbelievable. No one is ever going to buy this. <laughs> Space right. eagles, really? Okay, I got to watch together. I'll send you guys the link. Is this like a copytism thing at all? Or are we just seeing... Um, we I seeing don't actually know. People being blown up by mines? Like, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> well, yes. are kids. Don't be beach bums. Is hilar hilarious Australian ad tells kids not to be beach bums. Alright. Uh... Yeah, I'm not sure. I'll mute yeah, you it might just in case. Yeah, that's probably for the best. Peppo face is there, ready for whatever. He's terrified for these teenagers. He doesn't know what's gonna happen. I'm still shocked that none of you have seen this. I've n I've never seen this. I don't, I don't even know what I'm watching. Is it gonna oh, be like a <laughs> hilarious it, it, thing where they just explode it, violently or something? You'll, you'll, it's it's the greatest ad ever made.
This minefield sponsored by Coca-Cola. <laughs> <laughs> They're just teens having a wonderful time. What could go wrong? Oh, you'll see. Oh, she's gonna blow up. She's gonna blow up. <laughs> Holy shit! Oh my god! Oh, what the fuck? Why would you immediately start sprinting? What are you thinking? Oh, oh! Well, I mean, that's what he gets. What kind of ads do you allow in this country? <laughs> Jesus Christ! I don't, I don't believe that this is an ad to play on TV. <laughs> Well, I don't know if it was played on TV, but... Poor people. <laughs> if only I wasn't a beach bum. Oh, she died too. <laughs> this is for real. You gotta see this. You gotta see the message of this ad. This is what happens when you slack off. <laughs> <laughs> you Wait, get what? exploded Stay by your mind. <laughs> they put school. this on TV? I don't believe that they take I, it. I, 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 I'm not sure that they put it on I TV. I believe the 5,000 mile dingo fence over this. I, I just I, I just love the fact that in Australia, th this is where the ad comes from. Australia makes that kind of shit. <laughs> I just like the checking. idea that like it's not mines, it's just turtles. That's Australian turtles, that's what they do. Australian <laughs> turtles. I, uh, I just double checked the length of the dingo fence. Yeah, it is 5,600 kilometers. Jeez, not bad. Um, yes, yeah, especially when it was built in 1880 to 1885. <laughs> Someone said, "What the gnawing hell?" <laughs> 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 oh, the mind turn. I'm imagining someone stepping on like a turtle shell, and it just makes a clicking sound as it presses. Oh, down. oh, oh. Um, so there is a, an animal uh, that lives in the Great Barrier Reef. Go. I'm pretty. It's like a, how does uh, it kill like you, Fringy? Right, so, I'm guessing uh, it does it at night. It's like a, a, it looks like a rock, and it has these, um... Of course it does. <laughs> of course it looks it like has, an innocent rock. It has pincers, RPGs, like, what are we dealing with? <laughs> it has, uh, little things at the top, like little sharp pincers, and if you step oh. on it, it shoots into your foot. Yeah. What? So, wait, 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 you're, you're telling me that this thing is, like, the nail from Home Alone? Um, hold on, I, I, I don't, let me, let me see I was just waiting for it to be like, is the nail from Home Alone a rock thing that shoots stuff into you when you step on it? I, mean, I think I, uh, nails normally just shoot pain into you whenever yeah, you step yeah. on it. <laughs> horrible, horrible, terrible it's nail called pain. A, uh, it's called a stonefish. It's, it's, oh, yeah. I know, actually, I know what you're talking about. Yeah, the, sure. the, yeah, the, the fish that looks like a stone and then it's super poisonous and... Yeah. Thanks, nature, uh, for oh, making death rocks. Nature is metal, yeah. man. There's oh, a, that's one. That's one I didn't mention. The whole fucking reason. Did I? Did I? You remember I was telling you guys about like how I was on Reddit looking at the nature is metal stories. Um, the reason I'd got on there was because the video that w was shit. I think I only said my reaction to the video rather than what actually happened. Also, that's yeah, that's pretty terrifying. You don't know what that's gonna do. That just looks like one of those things you like. Okay, explain it to me. Like, I don't... <laughs> It doesn't look like a <laughs> That's the kind of thing I would see that on the beach, and then I would just be like, all right, I'm never going to a beach ever again. I like it's the, mainly the, Dude, they're stored like fucking face huggers are stored. <laughs> Keep them afloat in jars. <laughs> that way they can't harm the populace. Damn, nature, you scary. <laughs> so the one that got me into like 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 into the subreddit was uh, not into it, like 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 clicked into it was um there's a video that got highly upvoted. It's the zebra who'd had a tussle with a crocodile. It had tore open the, the, the belly, and its stomach had come out, and the zebra had escaped the clutches of the crocodile, only it was panicking, filled with adrenaline, and it kicks its own stomach until it disconnects from itself to escape. Oh my god, fuck off, Jesus Christ. It like, it comes out in a whole bag, and it just kicks and kicks and kicks and then sprints away, and it's like, dude, I think you need that. <laughs> like, <it's> <laughs> <laughs> to be fair, that's nope. great, I mean, weight loss option, you know, it's, have you considered detaching your stomach, sir? Mahler, that, I, I messaged you about it earlier, but when you were telling that story of like, um, what was it? The dough that was getting eaten by a Komodo, Komodo dragon, dragon. And it, like, ripped out the baby. Yeah, I had just ate a burger from Five Guys like 
seconds before you sold that story and i was like oh wow i'm so glad i was i don't know i don't know a lot about komodo dragons but the thread was all about how komodo dragons do not give a fuck they will like i think they're like really fucking they're pretty dangerous og terrifying yeah. they look like well just look at this shot like it, it, they look like something out of you you're like, oh walking with beasts walking with dinosaurs there it is the komodo dragon you're like oh wow look at that thing lucky that's extinct I, yeah. I think they're indigenous to, uh, to the Darwin Islands, though. Correct me if I'm wrong. They're indigenous. You got to go out of your way Asia. to fucking yeah. buy one of those. Wait, does Australia not have these ones? Well, they're near Australia. But... <laughs> they probably have something worse. <laughs> they're the only ones that got out of Australia. They're so fucking badass. <laughs> they Thank God he didn't need to build another fence. Well, the interesting thing is, I remember watching a thing that talked about how we used to have mega marsupials. So we used to have like three mega meters marsupial. tall. That's I'm another like a, class, a long, mega. A long time ago, like uh, you know, millions of years ago, kind of like the uh, the mega creatures that you had in in like North America before they were hunted to extinction. Um, I'm not sure what happened to these ones though. <laughs> like they're just not around anymore. That's a nifty little avatar there, Mola. Komodo dragon is probably one of the cooler animal names. Yeah, well, the island is called Komodo, that's why it's called a Komodo dragon, so... It's like, what is the coolest animal name? And I know that it's not really fair, because, like, some of them are cool because of the animal, but I mean... Chinchilla. Chinchilla. Well, like crocodile, <laughs> yeah. Well, I guess crocodile is cool regardless. That was a pretty cool animal name. But, yeah, I feel like Komodo dragon's got a skull pretty high up. <laughs> I think so, yeah. Imagine if those things actually had wings. What, Komodo? <laughs> yeah. You're like walking around and then you see a Komodo oh, God. <laughs> Swooping in like an actual dragon on wings. Yeah, if the Komodo, Komodo dragons had wings, I think we would have actually left the planet by now. <laughs> well, I don't think we would have made it. Just it to them. We're like, it's alright, you guys can take it. <laughs> um, okay, so apparently... It just says run, by the way. <laughs> on the thing. Apparently Komodo dragons, so Komodo's group behavior in hunting is exceptional in the reptile world. The diet of the big Komodo dragons consists of Timor deer. So these dra these are fast enough to hunt deer. Like, Well, maybe they're ambush predators like the alligators yeah, and stuff. Yeah, the video I saw is actually like... It it it's hard not to assume these things just like causing pain. It was just a... a a little fawn giving birth, and, like, and it's just like, yep, this is for me. And it's like, oh, no. Well, yeah, it says that um, Komodo's attacks on humans are rare, but evidently they've happened. Um, wow. I imagine it's one of those things where they're like, don't fuck with me and I won't fuck with you. And you're like, okay, all right. Yeah, I'll, I'll right yeah, sure, sure, anything you say. Absolutely. Mr. Mr. Dragon. I don't remember <laughs> what Mr. it was Komodo. from, but I remember hearing the, or watching this, like, episode of some show forever ago of some guy who was like hiking on Komodo Island and he got sick with something. I don't remember what it was, but he was being hunted by Komodo dragons while he was sick. And then he Jeez. eventually keeled over and died and the dragons got him and all that was left was the video camera footage because he was filming a documentary doing it. Imagine well, that. Komodo I'm dragons are venomous, I believe. Yeah, I, I know. I, I, we're just pi we're just piling on horrible things about this creature, I, but I think they're uh, also venomous. It, it was it, like ten years since I seen this, so I don't remember all the facts behind uh, it. But, apparently, yeah. they might be venomous. Maybe people they don't know for sure. Just, how the fuck just, do we not know for sure? Well, wait, <laughs> you want to go near them and try and find out? Do you think know? that we'd have like technology that would allow us to do things? How can we I find out that a snake is venomous, but not a komodo dragon? Do how how does one pin down like a Komodo dragon to how figure out? Tranquilize it, or you use I don't know. How, how do you tranquilize it when it's got like giant? Look at it. Like how does anything? You use through spear that? tranquilizers, okay? You fucking okay. dig it in. I'm sure that um, I'm pretty sure that like saltwater crocodiles are so strong that like lower caliber bullets can't actually penetrate. Their, okay. Uh, well, what if we drug up a baby with tranquilizers? Well, then we and use have it high caliber the bullets. Well, yeah, but the high caliber bullet will just kill it. So oh sure. no, not that. <laughs> hey, we try the tranquilizer to figure out how it works. How it works? 
Oh, well, can we can ex- well if it's dead, can't we extract like poison from its poison glands or something? Nope. Gotta have it alive, man. Yeah, I fun. feel like the rules to life are not fair. <laughs> Dude, the the fucking eagles got to space before we did. Like, I don't think that we can really say what this planet has in store for us. I feel really, like man. you can put like you know those stat screens of like the strengths and weaknesses of enemies. And then you get to like some absurdly unfair enemy that has only one very specific weakness, and he's just got strength stacked up on the entire right side of the screen. He is what you <laughs> call a meta build. So. Yeah, I, I feel like you could put those next to almost any animal in Australia, and it would make well, sense. I mean, I, uh, hmm. I, don't know, I, <laughs> I feel like you could put next to emus, just invincible. Don't try. Like, like, do not engage. <laughs> Extremely like, dangerous. Run. I, feel, I feel like emus would just be that they have evade, you know, like in Pokemon when they, they just keep doing like speed up or evade up, and so every attack he misses. Like, <laughs> it's like, nothing but yeah. sand attacks, so you can't even yeah. hit. <laughs> oh my god. Well, I mean, yeah, and it face. screeches at you. <laughs> Dude, no, early, game, sharply fell. early game when Metapod just keeps using Harden, you're like, stop it. Stop. <laughs> Quit it. This is you're doomed to <laughs> just you're doing this out of spite. The metapod's <laughs> the metapod's like, I don't, like, I don't like know. You. I guess I'll just get harder. I guess. I saying, Australia is filled with Dark Souls bosses. <laughs> <laughs> I wonder what the names would be for like the bosses if in Dark Souls in Australia, Emu of I don't know, like Emu of the Boreal Valley, mm-hmm. <laughs> like Emu of the Abyss, <laughs> Deathbird of Gorlock. Um, cassowary, soul of cinder, <laughs> razor feather, <laughs> death beak. No, you, you wouldn't need to change Komodo dragon. That's fine. <laughs> Just keep well, that one. Komodo is like the DLC for when you venture, like you know, to the islands. So he's like Gale or whatever he's called. I don't know that much about Dark Souls. The Beast of Komodo Island. <laughs> I can't yeah, tell if that was a laugh or a cough. It was both. Choose one. Yeah, I, greedy Australian. I, I, what? Wanting to laugh and cough? How dare I? Yeah, leave some for the rest of us. Why did you want to cough? <laughs> yeah, it's a clear throat. Yeah, yeah, clear the air. Yeah, I think that's okay. We can approve of that. I'm glad you asked us permission first, though. Your, your approval <laughs> to cough. <laughs> Hey, uh, uh, I, I think people are gonna explode if I don't ask. Mr. Tone, what, what do you what do you think is, like, better? Like, if you were to choose one as, as the better one, would it would it be Christmas or Halloween? Uh, Halloween for sure. Yes! Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. I like dressing up. Welcome but... to Team Halloween, my brother. <laughs> yeah. I, let's be real, though. When we were kids, like, Christmas was the shit. Oh, yeah, sure. But yeah, Christmas kind of lost its meaning over time. I feel like, uh, Rags, you're, you're pro Christmas, right? <laughs> of course, Christmas is better than Halloween. You're I guess it's close. It's obvious. On the Christmas I mean, it's side. obvious if you know you're just a. What do you, yeah, what do you mean, Friggy, you're pro Christmas too. Why are you saying it like it's a weird thing? No, 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 I would, huh? You said you said it like, oh, you're pro Christmas, right? It's like, so are you. It's okay. It's all right. Yeah, I wasn't saying it. There's nothing to be ashamed was, of. We give you permission. The two of us are pro Christmas. <laughs> it's like it a political candidate. <laughs> Well, I, I do, I like, I mean, I think, because uh, we talked about this the other day, part of the reason why I'm very slanted towards Christmas is because there's just not a lot of exposure to Halloween in Australia. Like, all I ever had was Treehouse of Horror. Well, that, that, the thing is, is Australia is just Halloween every day. Yeah. I mean, even if you did have Halloween, you'd still prefer Christmas, because it's Halloween, I mean, it's Halloween just can't compare I, uh, to Christmas. I, I, really like Christmas. I really like Christmas. Christmas is cool. Um, I'm not going to be as mean as Shad and say that Halloween is worthless. Did, did oh, Shad get like touched by Halloween as a child? <laughs> he he <laughs> had a. I don't know if it was prepared, but that was a speech and a half. That, that rant like it disturbed me a little bit. <laughs> it was like Shad, what happened to you on Halloween? Oh, I suppose people are curious about uh, your your leanings, Wolf. Um, funnily enough, they would discover it. Is it in the second reaction set? So it would be Halloween, after this re-upload tank. Halloween's better objectively by every measure. <laughs> well, is- there you go. Um, uh, well, 
Well, yeah, I, that, 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 that was something. It sounded like a Hitler speech. I mean, oh, definitely. He was he was going for it, and I, you know what? I respect the passion. Um, well, I, mean, I think what, uh, I guess his case. What? What, what, what was his case? Yeah. Oh. Oh, he, I mean, to be honest with you, all I remember, he was just shitting all over Halloween. He was like, Halloween's the worst thing ever. Really, really wasn't even any arguments. <laughs> never heard Family. any arguments. <laughs> never heard any. He, he look, he, he has a passion for Christmas, and like I said, I can't deny that shit, that was good. But Halloween, I think it was done, I think it was done dirty, you know, in that speech. Peace on uh, Earth, my yeah, ass. So, There's no peace on Earth. I guess the, the thing Christmas. is... Christmas is um there's there's a certain I I don't really like to build up to Christmas as all at all but like Christmas Day I've always liked I I, I really like Christmas Day um even if it doesn't snow here and instead it's like forty five degrees and it's boiling but uh I, I feel like Halloween is universal but like Christmas like well, I came from a poor family so I got like no presents. And like well, guess, my friend had like Nintendo sixty four. The spirit of all giving, games. and all he can think about is what he can get from it. That's just that's a, <laughs> so sad. It's sad to hear. Damn right. It's sad to hear it. It's sad to hear, it. Right. It's sad it? to hear it. Giving when you can just buy what you want at any point of time, and it can be spooky well, themed. What the world's come to. I I think uh, well I, I I don't know that like gift giving is right, one of the things. Like, I, I mean immediately there's, there's oh, one you're, of the you're, you're, my take on ho or Christmas. So there's like three major things about it. There's the gift part, which becomes irrelevant once you get a job and a credit card and an Amazon account. What? But there, no, no, it, it doesn't because you get to give gifts to the people that you yeah, love. Yeah, if you have the money to do that, which, which you know, you, if you have a job, like you said, if you have a job and a credit card and all that stuff, then you can do that. So yeah, it never becomes then, irrelevant. Well, well, that's not exactly true. It depends on well, which job you have. Selfish little elf. That's all I hear. <laughs> Selfish little <laughs> Halloween yeah. gremlins. We can uh, see about me, me, me. You, you, you do slave driving with the elves, so you can't really. That's fucked up, dude. Well, I don't. That, that, I don't. Thing, the the elves can leave whenever they want. Irrelevant. They can, they're allowed to unionize, and they can do all the stuff that they want. I like the, the other thing. <laughs> Like the elves unionizing against Santa, he wakes up one day. No, not against. It's, it's it's just an understood thing. You know, we got to make sure that you know we're all on the same we, page well, here and things are okay. Yeah, you, you know, the elves sitting across from Santa like they are. Well, it's the more, it's more symbolic than anything else. It's like we want to finish at five. Fuck you, finish at five. Finish my fucking like iPads. I wanted to actually uh, switch focus just a little bit to. Either, I mean, it's totally up to you, Tom, but um, I was going to go with, with either talking a bit about games, because you clearly like your games, or I heard you weren't too much of a fan, and I'd like to maybe explore this with you, uh, the, 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 the certain Star Wars movies, or Game of Thrones Season 8. I would totally love to talk about that for a little bit, if you're up for uh, it. <laughs> leave it up to the chat. <gasps> I am a giving person, Rags. Appar apparently not. <laughs> I, I, I think this like is a cover story. I don't like it. I don't love it, but I like it. He doesn't have to wait till Christmas to be giving rags, unlike everyone else who pretends and the, to and be the giving is, <laughs> in the givingest time of the year. All of a sudden, oh, I just don't, don't have any money. Yeah, uh, yeah. Oh, right games, now. Games, <laughs> Star Wars, Game of Thrones, Star Wars. Oh, God, this is, a, this is a big collection. What do we do? We need a, a lot of Game of Thrones. Oh, a lot of Star Wars. Game of Thrones. I will Christmas? say, though, let me, let me cut in here. I will say, though, I know more about Game of Thrones. Oh, go for uh, it. Wolf and, and Frangie we're, we're talking about before the podcast started. Um, I have not seen The Mandalorian. Just throwing that out there. That's all right. I know it's a, <laughs> it's a, it's a heated topic, I've heard. Well, I think, oh, no. Uh, I, mean, I mean, we we agree, but I don't think everybody agrees with, with our take on it. Yeah. Yeah, I literally being in the minority right. that it's very very mm. beloved but mm. but you think it's beloved or you oh it is yeah it's rated really really highly already but i don't think it's very good at all in fact i think it's quite terrible we have to, we're talking about that's the video right? i'm working on right now yeah, big one. can we get the cliff notes in case game of thrones wins i would like to hear why about mandalorian i guess yeah, if i was going to give 
cliff notes. Uh, don't think that the characters are consistent. The plot is basically nonsensical. A lot of contrivances. It's nothing anything really special with why it's bad. Um, it's a lot it's of the just, normal stuff. Yeah, it's just not offensively bad. Like, I don't hate it with any kind of personal thing. And it's not like the, the last Star Wars movies or Game of Thrones season eight. It doesn't really ruin anything. I just don't think it's a well-written and well-made show. But I so see not, why people like it, you know? Not catastrophic, but bad. Oh, yeah, it's just it's just bad. It doesn't destroy things. It doesn't crap all over beloved characters and retcon a whole bunch of lore and things of that yeah, nature. Yeah, what it you're referencing with that time. could be anything. <laughs> what do you think is it could be a selection of, like, seven different things, but yes. <laughs> Let me ask you guys a question. Like, I know some of you guys do, like, really long-form stuff. Yeah. When you, like, when you, like, sit down to write about something or think about something do you approach it in like okay is this movie um not was it not was it made poorly or did i not enjoy it you know what's your viewpoint when you go into well one of those? i'm glad you asked that's kind of like our thing is that we we take our enjoyment and whether it's you know of good quality and we're pretty good at separating the two uh, kind of, I would say it's almost like the core of EFAP, EFAP yeah. is separating the subjective from the objective nature of media. We and we are and... fully ready to say that something is terrible, but we love it, or it's great and we just don't like it. Yeah, like we try and create a structure, and then sort of as things come out, we're like, how does it fare in the structure? And then it's like, also, what did you think of it? Like, on, on how, how did it make you feel? How did, it, did it give you the goods or the bads or the nothings? And. I think the main reason why that's valuable is because if it's strictly talking about what people like and don't like, it makes it very hard to know whether or not, like, it, like if you're looking at a review for something and it's all like and don't like, that's very, that's very subjective, and so it doesn't help you. You know what I mean? Like, it doesn't. It's it's almost impossible to know like where something is going to sit, um, in terms of like a rating, if it's all strictly how somebody felt because it's really vague and wishy washy. Yeah, so if, if, if you're criteria, just going by how you feel, how can you, you really know if it's like of high quality or, or not? Because feelings are so. Why you like things can be for a, a uncountable amount of different reasons. You could, if you like broke up with a girlfriend and watched the thing, and then you're like, this was shit. And then you watch it like a year later when you're happy and fine, and you're like, oh, why did I hate this so much? You're like, easily swayed opinions through like all kinds of different uh you know influences i guess and so like, it's really hard sometimes to be like wait what was it actually and not to mention recanting events in a thing can actually be really funny because um we we covered someone once upon a time who was convinced that han solo was killed by ray <laughs> <laughs> he might have remembered that part of the movie a uh, <laughs> we let's just call it he had alternative facts yes there may have also been another person who very firmly believed that Gimli wanted Frodo to die in Lord of the Rings. <laughs> the, the, the best so thing about true. that one is that they double-checked. They, they took the time to say, this is true, don't tell me it's not. And you're like, okay, alright. <laughs> That's just really funny to me. Well, yeah, so did we decide in Game of Thrones or... Whatever the other That's option was. A lot of Game of Thrones is no, take, like, take, way more than I expected. Take the conversation away. What do you want? What do you want well, to know? Oh, actually, just before before you jump into it, because I will unfortunately I I uh, I have to depart for now, but I will be back later. Uh, back. It was very it was very good speaking to you. Um, and I guess I'd throw mine in for for Game of Thrones as well, if that's like the direction you're taking it in. So yeah. Good to meet you, man. Uh, I think you ruined Australia for me, though. <laughs> uh, hey, look, it's not. It's it's it is a good country. Um, just don't approach. Yeah, it all that said, life. it's actually great. <laughs> yeah, Ignore, it's just, just oh, it's the wildlife. Life. That's it. It's fine. Yeah, everything else is really nice. But uh, it, yeah, uh, you need to right, caveat and say, look, it's a great country, but yeah, the, the landmines. No, I, I I'm I'm flipping it the other way around. Wildlife excluded, and and I actually think the animals are really cool. And I think the landmines really on the beach. Yeah, if we, in the same way that Warhammer 40k is cool. Yeah, yeah. Well, I'm. I think I think it's a really unique and interesting ecosystem, and I think it's important that we preserve it. I think the uh, Lost of Us world has a unique we, ecosystem. Or the vast majority of living organisms in Australia, 
it's not that bad of a place to be. <laughs> I, look, I'm just saying. Maybe killed or eaten by pretty much everything that walks here. But yeah, come on by. Walks, flies, I, crawls, digs. Like, <laughs> like yeah, just even uh, the rocks stay. will fucking inject poison into your feet. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, Friggy says stay indoors, but yeah, it was uh, it was good talking here, and good luck with the rest of it until I come back. When yeah, is uh, that? We we looking? Oh, what? Like four, five, six, uh, seven hours? What are we what are we doing? Probably like sixish hours. My God, the, you uh, might be able to get back into this very stream. Oh yeah, maybe. Um, yeah, maybe. Uh, I'll let you know. But uh, yeah. All right, catch you later, guys. Absolutely. You, Goodbye. Let me ask a question real quick as he cuts out. How, so you guys have been streaming for, and by the way, I sit down to play a video game for like two hours. I'm like creaking and groaning. <laughs> like you've been uh, in the chair for 14 hours at this point? Is that what I've you? been shifting my cheeks How? around here. Yeah, there. I try, no, to, try a, to do a little right? bit of... Uh, eating, drinking, them, how them. are you feeling? Oh yeah, you know, a lot of this okay. happens once per week, so I'm relatively used to it, but yeah, drink your fluids, move your body around, and get them breaks while you can, you know, healthy memes. Like, you did a health video recently, right? Yeah, it just, it reminds me, my, like, my very first job before I went off to college was at a call center selling, like, CDs and stuff for a bank, and I had to sit down in a chair for eight hours, and I got two... 10 minute breaks outside my lunch. Jeez. Wow. And like, I thought that was like literal torture. So, like, I can bet you guys for the stamina. Honestly, it's the friends that keep us going and the entertainment and the chat, the interaction. It's all very uh, engaging. Um, as someone in chat just said, Mauler's buttocks are highly experienced. True. They're like wow. big pillows. I mean, mm. you have some chiseled ass cheeks. Mm -hmm. You, you, you shift around a bit here and there, but oh, yeah. yeah, a lot of it does come down to who are you hanging out with? What are you talking about? Um, if you've got something engaging to, you know, that you care about, that you know a lot with, if you're having a good time, if you're laughing and enjoying yourself, you know, it's, it's, it's a lot easier than just sitting in the chair by yourself, being all alone and sad. I gotta say, I've gotten a lot of invites for podcasts, and this is the first one I've ever done. <gasps> really? Hey. He does love us. How, <laughs> how have you found it? It's been weird, I know. <laughs> no, no. It's, uh, you guys are pretty funny. Um, actually, I had no idea. Oh, by the way, I gotta get this out of the way. Where did Tonald originate? What does it mean? <laughs> <laughs> I know there's gotta be something big behind that curtain. I don't know if oh, I want to know. I, I, I can explain. Uh, I feel like I should. So I'm ready. So one of your videos, I don't remember which one it was. Uh, it had tone loke at the bottom of it. And we were like, what does tone mean? And we just jokingly were like, OK, how do we what what do we fill in? Because tones definitely got to be a, a shortened version of your name. Obviously, Tony, but uh, we just memed it and uh just combined donald so, and tone and came up with tonald and well, that's not obvious don't say it like it's obvious because tone and tony are the same amount of letters yeah it's not I, a shortened term of i wasn't well, sure I, mean, I, I think obvious now that he's told us in this call yeah so without spelling them i can totally see how tone is short for tony because one's got one syllable one's got two. yeah so in that sense it's shorter but but um, hey, yeah, so without it, I just so I had no idea. Like tone was short, and and I, I, it just seemed tonal was funny. And then we were like, that is, uh, until we get proper word on it, that must be canon. Okay, I I shall accept it. <laughs> I like it. it. Might be. It's a very. It's a name of a like. If you had a friend, that's kind of like their name. You know, I say hey, tonal. You know. I feel like there's a little Hobbit bit name. more to it, but for now, I'm cool with it. Um, some some things have humble origins. So I don't want I don't want you to you know, spoil too much, but like, what can we uh, what can we expect cooking wise? What, what's uh, you want to do? You want to entice, tease a little bit? I'm telling you, man, it's been tough. I've been really thinking about it, and um, maybe we can get some chat action here. Help me out, but um, at the moment, 
I don't have any solid plans for who I'm going to feature. Mm -hmm. And it's sad because I really liked doing those videos. And while they weren't my most popular videos, um, I found a lot of joy in them. And I um, think that might just be cooking. because they're newish, like they're newish from your channel. So sometimes if someone swaps the kind of content they do, they might lose some old people and they need to build up the, you know, a new crowd of people who like that stuff. But they are I, I very agree. good. I agree. Um, it actually is kind of a window into my past, actually, into YouTube. You know, uh, at one point around 2018, 2017, I kind of stumbled into this weird like negative, dramatic, just really condescending YouTuber. Um, I think a couple of us did, a couple of big YouTubers, me, Tyler from Clean Prince. And um, I got stuck on that road for a long time. I don't know how I ended up there, but I got like really unhappy, like just constantly like waking up and putting out like pretty much garbage videos on a daily basis, which it seemed like that was, you know, the a good way to grow the channel at the time and i was at at first it was kind of enjoyable but as like time went on i decided that like i needed to shift uh, my uh, the way i approach content and i started to explore different ideas the food thing was pretty much during the apex of my transitionary phase like um i'd say over the past year or so i've pretty much gone a, done away with like my old my old self on YouTube, um, that really negative presence um, started to focus on like celebrating games and stuff like that. And then like the food thing was just like this natural like experimentation avenue for me because, and let's be honest, like if you're a if you're a full time YouTuber, it's it's really tough to like balance your own happiness with what's good for you financially. And saying it like that is kind of demeaning almost because it, it it almost takes away from why you would want to become a creator, right? You, you fall into this trap of like being like almost depressed. Like you mean forced. you mean like you know what um what works better for let's say algorithms and and sort of checks and clicks and stuff kind when of, and so you might yeah. start edging toward that instead of edging toward just doing what you love. Yeah, yeah. I mean that's the essence of it, right? Um, and then when you're like I was, I was financially strapped to the position as well because I quit my job and I was like 2016 or so. And it was a it was a big job. You know, I went to school for like eight years to get my MBA. And um when I decided to to fill the shoes of this YouTube channel is it was really based off of my um passion for gaming. And then like the second you lose that, which I know a, a few YouTubers that have gone down that road, myself included, you know, guilty. It's like you can either keep going down that route or you can like try to transition out, but you're strapped to it financially. So it's like this weird balance. And I think that's kind of like a topic that doesn't get discussed a lot among YouTubers is like, are, are YouTubers actually happy? Oh, man. Not yeah, this... a, a very, I, people have a, an idyllic sort of version of it. Like it's, it's, they don't see it as a job. That comes with all of the issues that a, a more typical and traditional job might have. They they think of it in a very romanticized sort of idealistic Fantastic way. way. Yeah, and that that's that's really not how it is for a certain demographic of people on YouTube. You know, there's Amen. there's guys like you guys who seem to like do what you want to do, and you have communities behind them. And that's you know you do what you want to do, and it makes you happy, which is cool. But then like there's some YouTubers who primarily exist in the realm of like developing news content daily content dramatic or provocative content you know like tackling issues like ea is a shitty company microtransactions this special edition is is uh, predatory you know like issues like that mm -hmm. and like those are inc those are way different than someone who just does it for the love of what what they do so like i'm trying to get from that point to a place where i'm like generally happy with everything i put out and i've pretty much been there for like six months now and it feels good but kind of circling back to what you were saying um it's a new concept it's radical it has pretty much nothing to do <laughs> with the wants and needs of probably all the viewership up until this point so i'm hoping that i can continue to make the videos and um at some point they'll they'll take off and well, i'll the, be able to uh, you know keep going 
one thing we noticed about, especially when the cooking video started, was compared to your old stuff from when we first saw you and before and all that is like this dramatic uptick in quality and passion. Everything from it was written better, um, seeing you do everything, you seem to be really into it. Everything from the slow-mo cameras and the high quality footage to churning out a finished product. It looked like like what you did isn't something that everyone could do almost to the point where I feel like it might even be detrimental um, because it's so high. It's, it's so high skill and high quality sort of stuff. Um, but not something that you can't like yeah, inevitably um, teach people to do and then get more people into it, get more engagement over time. Yeah. yeah it's it's a huge just, uh, difference in a good yeah. way. No, I know what you're saying. It's like, where's the connection point for the person watching it? Is it the food? Is it the stupid jokes? Is it the green screen stuff? Is it, or is it the actual person behind the video? You know, that's a, a big topic in itself. Like, do you go out and watch your YouTubers for them? Or do you watch it because the video title made you want to click on it? Huge difference. And for the most part, I've always been in that latter camp, which you know, took me to a place where I was like, okay, I, I want something different. So that's kind of why I started it. I mean, if I got can... a personality that would definitely attract people. It's very, uh, you're, you're very approachable. You know, you're not, you know, a, a hoity toity sort of, you know, better than you kind of guy. You're someone that I think pretty much anybody could relate to and listen to and talk with. Um, and and yeah, I think that's the, definitely the, a benefit for the, you. The cooking aspect comes right through in terms of just like, ooh, this, uh, I want to see what we'll see. I was going to say, I noticed um, definitely something changing when you, when you did your, um, your video on the, the three games uh it was was it mario 64 banjo kazooie and um a third one that dude, that was the video that was literally the video yeah no one I, watched it but that was i liked it <laughs> dude that's the one you said uh you're gonna be fucking dead <laughs> when you fall off the <laughs> yeah. it's good. Like, i just didn't give a shit at that point i just wanted to do something that was interesting and it's kind of a little bit of a spin on donkey stuff or donkey sorry um very mm -hmm. Short, snappy, stupid, con you know. Yeah, but yours is good. If, you uh, know, if I could add something real quick. We cover or have covered a lot of people over the course of this show who are pretty bad content creators <laughs> and who refuse to change, no matter how legitimate the criticism, no matter how consistent they, or how consistently rather they commit the same mistakes. And they just refuse to do anything different to improve their content. I think you might be, at least to my memory, the only person that we've ever covered on the show who exponentially grew so much better with your content. And I'll be the first to admit, I really didn't like your content when I first saw it, but I genuinely love it now. It's really, yeah. really good, really well written, really well edited. And you can, uh, the, the passion in it is really palpable as you're watching it. We suppose, actually feel like you care about it, and that's amazing. I suppose it's with better than any content we've seen. Are you okay with us, like, you know, promoting it <laughs> semi regularly? Basically, like, we like watching the cooking ones for sure because they're like a lot of fun, and we would absolutely like encourage because uh, chat have been filling up with hearts as you've been talking. Um, well, here's the thing. Let me cut you off, dude. Sorry, but I just want to say your your community has been really like nice to me. Um, I'm getting like all these followers and comments and nice things as you've said in the, uh, my Twitter feed and stuff like that. So I just want to say thank you to, um, like, I, I have no idea who you guys are. I just came on board because, um, something new, something fresh, but, uh, your, your community has really reached out and, and given me a, a warm welcome. So I just want to thank you guys. Absolutely, well, we mean, deserve it. It's you really deserve, good yeah. stuff. Like those videos are really fucking good, man. We we often rank like like and try and figure out what the best stuff is, and like yours is. I don't even off the top of my head. I'm trying to think of like what what are the best videos we covered, and it's like it's gonna be the two cooking videos are gonna be really up there. Like really enjoyed them. Appreciate that. I think the turning point. Um, you guys can cut me off if I'm going too far, but uh, was when I had this. I think it was summer 2017. I was, I was kind of depressed actually. My girlfriend and I had broken up. I had moved out to uh, like an apartment. I was all alone, but my channel was growing 
enormously. Like I was getting tons of views, but the content I was putting out, like I'll admit it, it was, it was pretty low quality. I would just go on, uh, on Reddit every morning, look for the most controversial issue. And I would, I'd basically just take that and, and craft in my opinion story on it and put it on YouTube. And, um, eventually this guy, and I've never mentioned this guy ever because my philosophy in terms of like haters and stuff like that is I don't interact with them. Um, usually a wise idea. I never, ever, it's just a personal thing with me. I don't ever go after people or talk bad about people because I believe like in respect, whether or not you don't, you like the person or not. I don't like to slander people or talk behind people's backs. I've never, ever made a video about anyone on my channel for the exception of there's like an angry Joe video where we actually supported him. But there was this guy in 2000, I think it was 2017 named Trolls Us. I still remember his name. And he he made a video about me and it was it was pretty bad um, for, from what I heard. To this day, I actually haven't watched it because it's, I mean, it's tough sometimes when when people, it wasn't critique I've heard. It was, it was a slandering, you know what I mean? It was a push someone into the mud and, and rub their face in well, the dirt. Uh, not not trying to like uh, outdo you in any way, shape, or form, but we have lots of experience in that department. Yeah, <laughs> scary amount of experience. Well, Some I people mean, are they hate our guts. Well, you're always going to have haters, but this particular guy, um, I don't know what happened with the algorithm or or what, but it just started this series of hate videos about me, and there was I think there was like ten or fifteen videos. I never watched any of them, but um. I got into this this space where I was like getting depressed. I don't know if you guys have ever dealt with like, you know, the job of YouTube itself, like actually making you sad. Because yeah, of sometimes. Else. Yeah, I was on YouTube for eight years. I actually ended doing YouTube videos back in last December just because the depression had been getting to me so much over the years. So definitely feel you there. Do you feel better now? Oh, yeah. I mean, like I was telling you before we started up the stream, uh, I mean, I pretty much gutted social media out of my life, and it's been much better. I mean, there's still issues. It's, you know, clinical chronic depression, so it's not really something that goes away. But, you know, getting the negative things out of my life has definitely helped me in a very substantive way. That's, that's my whole philosophy. Just do not surround yourself with negativity. Oh, and absolutely. Was, Surround was, yourself with people who will support you and be there for you. Yeah, and, and positive people. And this was exactly yeah. what this guy was. This, this guy was this negative atomic bomb. Like while I was in the process of going through like, I don't want to say clinical depression because I've never been diagnosed with depression, but I had reached an all time low. My channel was growing, but I was so unhappy to the point where I would like not be able to sleep. And I remember really fondly, like walking out into my living room. I had a one bedroom, you know, get out of bed, couldn't sleep, walk into my living room. I would literally just open the blinds and stare up at the moon, dude. And just, be, I was like really unhappy. So like that, the, that event in 2017, that basically set off a chain reaction with me over the course of the course of the next year where I had to like really find myself again go through the learning process of what happened, who I become, how far down, you know, the rabbit hole I went, how do I get back up? How do I make myself happy? Because I, for damn sure, I wasn't happy doing what I was doing. And I guess this is a question for you guys. Do you think, I probably don't even have to say any names, but those individuals that they operate YouTube channels and they, all they do is slander and hate. Like, do you think it's possible for someone to enjoy their own life living in that environment? Um, I think it takes a special kind of person to do that. Um, I certainly don't think a lot of people can. It's one thing to be an audience member around that kind of content all the time where you're looking for drama. You're looking for, you know, who fucked up big this week. Who can we? Who can be our target this week? Yeah, there are you know, channels. They, they want to be like a part vampires. Of the mob. Like they only survive off other people falling. 
yeah, yeah hive mind changed. yeah these a lot of internet blood sport kind of stuff a lot of yeah, that kind of content that i learned very quickly to stay away from it brings nothing but misery and they love um, to get personal uh which is a bit of a worry you know, something i've noticed about a lot of the people that attack uh cfap and anyone affiliated with it is uh that a lot of them post about how upset they are like quite a lot on twitter some of it comes across as like please give me attention and sympathy points please but if any of it's genuine and just for the sake of argument i'll give them the benefit of the doubt and assume it is it it seems that a lot of them don't seem to be very happy with themselves and they kind of lash out and attack other people to kind of project that anger onto somebody else because if we ever get to talk to any of them it's always it's just like this really chill really civil and they get to talk for as long as they want i mean that's probably much, it's pretty much the what you were talking about wolf is almost emblematic of the culture of people especially yeah. with social media it's like with autonomy your computer screen becomes a shield that can't be penetrated and you can pretty much say whatever you want and it hurts which is why just personally i've never ever gone out of my way to ever i think the only time i ever featured someone besides angry joe on my channel was this article by kotaku which was a publication at one point i respected but i've changed my mind since i think a lot of people are in the same boat yeah <laughs> yeah, <true. laughs> yeah um there was an article written by this uh, it doesn't matter if it's a man or a woman but it was a woman talking i think it was titled um if you get harassed in an online video game speak up which to me as someone who who knows how to placate toxicity by not encouraging riling you know riling people up and putting yourself in the position where you're attacked i basically made a video that said you know what this is probably not the best idea but yeah um, if people are harassing you the what they want more than anything else is to get a, a reaction from you they want to see that what they're doing is bothering you yeah it was basically a it was basically an article talking about how we should rally around people that are getting harassed in online video games and and basically tell the other person to shut the f up which obviously if you have one brain cell <laughs> you know that that's going to instigate more wait it reminds me of like the bully hunters thing even if it worked like the idea is just like you're only going to make everything worse the idea that you send people, people gonna... into a game you counter grief it's like oh that's yeah they don't seem to understand people like trolls like that who do that sort of stuff it is a badge of honor if they get a bully hunter sent after them yeah and like I that's amazing be, that's what they're going to try to do i hate to be political but um in terms of more of a meta narrative scope it's the same issue with um the news you know when there's a god forbid uh school shooting they posterize the killer which is what they want they want the attention they want the fame that's the only thing they want when in fact we should be never mentioning the name of that person yeah not yeah. talking about anything but we should be focusing on the victims but no mainstream media evangelizes those kinds of anti-heroes to the point where even on the social media platforms like twitter or, or whatever it becomes a point of attraction for people like to strive for and that's really unfortunate i think it's surround youtube and being in the sphere of making content and you know, like I, a lot of people have no idea what it is until it's directed their way because most people are just audiences they don't have any level of personal stake in it they don't have to worry about someone making a video and you know tens of thousands of people you know having some error of yours or perceived error of yours or you know kind of put out there context. yeah it's it's problem. a people don't know how to relate to it until it happens to them and eventually a lot of people just get a thick skin built up, maybe. Um, oh, I have, yeah. It's tough to explain to people who haven't had it happen to them. Well, the, the, what I always tell people is, who are like mean, instead of like fighting back with these people, I always say the same thing. Well, I actually have never said this, but if I was going to say it, this is what I would say. You go out there, put your heart and soul into something, a piece of music, a piece of art, a YouTube video. You go out there, bust your ass, put a bunch of energy into making something you truly love. 
and then have me come up on your video and tear you to shit unfairly. Tell me how that feels. And it, it kind of speaks to the idea that there is a divide between creators and, and viewers where sometimes they don't see the psychological battle of being a YouTuber because all they see is the content. Yeah. They don't have any stake in it. For them, yeah. for most people, it it's just it stops and ends at there's some people and they are a free source of entertainment for me. And that's where it totally ends. I don't have any investment really in, you know, like I have no personal stake in it. I can always go to someone else or I can, you know, laugh at someone or mock them. I could chase them around and I can hound them down. It doesn't matter to me. Like it, it's not my problem. And if something bad happens to them, I'll just move on to the next person. It's no biggie. And it's just a cycle that always happens. YouTube's They've never free. had that target on their back. Yeah, there's no cost to YouTube at all. Anyway. It's the people who make the content that are the ones who are the most at risk and the most invested in everything, and they have the most to lose. I'd actually um, love to see like a statistic on... I don't know if you could do a poll or, or whatever, but... You could you could branch it out by type of YouTuber or type of content, whether they're community driven or content driven. How many of those people are actually happy? I'm not talking about the people who just do it for fun. You know, like I don't know if you guys do it full time or what, but you know, the person that just puts out a video every couple months because they love what they do. I'm talking about the people who who do it for basically a necessity, you know, sustenance. Like, are those people happy or not? Yeah, do they feel uh, trapped? I think it would be an interesting, at least, thought experiment to... Uh... I think one of the issues is that this is kind of a new thing. So the data and the numbers just aren't quite there yet. Because you you tell people, like, hey, what do you do for a living? It's like, oh, I, I make YouTube videos. I, I do a podcast online. And it's like a new, weird, foreign thing to them. Like, they, like people have, oh, you can get paid for doing that? Or that's a job? Yeah. That, that's what you do for a living? And they have no idea because it's so new to some. Yeah, I was at, um, well, before COVID and during my job, someone asked me, like, what do, I, what do I do for a hobby? And I just so happened to mention that I make YouTube videos on the side. It's like, what? You get money from that? How? <laughs> I had the same then, thing. It's like, Sister, yeah, sister's man. wedding, a uh, distant family member was just like, what does that mean? Review movies. How does, what, is, what, do you, what do you mean? Like, you make videos. Like, how, does that, what, how can that make money? <laughs> Talk, you're talking to a microphone? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I, I think as time rolls on and it becomes more and more mainstream to do this sort of thing, a streaming, podcasting, internet media work becomes more and more just commonplace and understood by people. It will... Uh, I'm curious to see what the psychology data eventually turns back because the people who consume it, who watch YouTubers, watch the stuff they go through, and the people who do it themselves, we sort of kind of have, we, we get hunches about, you know, what it is. We've seen the stories of people going crazy and losing their minds and stuff like that. And you think it's driven by their success or lack thereof success? Or, I mean, I think so. Happy to a degree. Like, I think some people are trapped into it. Yeah, I mean, you, you, have you the, strike it big with a video. Uh, your the algorithm works in your favor for a while. All of a sudden, you've got all this attention, all of this money's rolling in, and the money can be great. And you've got you're like a kind of a quasi celebrity essentially. But are you equipped to deal with that? Are you equipped to have people find out who you are and where you live? Are you ready to accept the idea that people are going to be watching for all of your mistakes that you ever make and? On the internet, nothing will ever be forgotten. And for a lot of people, that's just not something they can handle. No way. So they find success and they don't want to lose the success. But at the same time, they're just tortured by all the stuff that comes along with it. There's a lot of baggage. Yeah. And to shine a bright light on a dark painting, what I've found recently is you can really garner a great satisfaction from knowing that people love what you do and it really fills me with joy when I when I read comments and I was like, oh man, you made my day. Oh, this is awesome, dude. Cool video, man. You you you, you made me feel good. And like it's a good feeling. It's like that is what I'm after these days. I'm not after the, the fucking money or the viewership or whatever. I'm just about 
expressing things that I feel with inside me and then giving, giving those to someone else, whether that's teaching people how to work out or cook or sharing, you know, my favorite games or whatever. There's, there's this like sensation inside of me where it's like, I'm done doing it just to do it. Now I want to make people feel good and myself good at the same time. So there, there, yes, there's like a, there's a psychological dark side that we've been droning on about for 30 minutes. That's very depressing. <laughs> but and if it wasn't <laughs> worth it, we wouldn't do it. I was going to say it's a but, reality. It's good to talk about it. Yeah, there's, but what I'm trying to say is there's great things that happen when people come together on YouTube. And for the first time in my channel, since I went down that road, I previously discussed, I'm starting to realize that and it feels good. Yeah, when you it, it seems like a it seems like such a tiny little thing, someone just typing a little YouTube comment that says, you know, you did a great job or that it made their day or that they really enjoy I'm so happy to watch your stuff. But something so tiny can really, really mean a lot to the person you send it to. It's because people always remember the bad and they never remember the good. Well, one of yeah. my favorite favorite ways to think about that is like when I was twenty one working my way through college. Um, you know, I told you guys I was poor earlier. My family was never able to help me pay tuition or get an apartment or buy a car. I, uh, I gambled for a living, uh, playing one, two, no limit, sometimes two, four, but it's beside the point. You always remember your bad beats. You never remember the ones you won. It's always that one tiny little detonator, whether it's a bad beat, you know, you had a, you had a straight. On the turn, the guy rivers a flush. He shouldn't have been in the hand, but he was. Whether it's that or uh, a comment you receive on YouTube, you're always going to remember that one stinger. You know what I mean? And when you get those little blips from people, awesome job, man. This is this is cool. You made my day. That washes away a lot of that bad stuff, and it becomes a place where. Yeah, man, this is cool. This this can be cool. It makes you feel like it's bigger than yourself, you know? When you get an email from someone who says, like, I was struggling with depression, and I even had, like, suicidal thoughts, and I was in a really rough place, but watching your content, like, it really helped me to stay positive, and it helped me through a really bad point in my life. There's things like that that, you know, like, it makes you think this, you know, what I do, it isn't just me. It, it really does extend a, it extends outwards, and it's, really kind so, of humbling in a way i'll tell you it what means a lot my the most watched video on my channel is a, is a video on video game addiction called the bitter reality of video game addiction but i'll tell you what dude i received upwards of ten thousand emails in response to to the million people who watched me and the countless people who repeat watch me or whatever i have an email box full of between seven and ten thousand emails I'd say a good 500 of those are deep, hugely emotional stories about people in the most dire situations, completely addicted to games. They don't know where to turn. They don't know how to get out of it. Some Dude, some of these people are like 10. They email me these novels. I still get emails trickling in lost their job to a, a video game <laughs> their their mortgage they can't afford their mortgage because they they lost their their job because they were too addicted to world of warcraft or csgo or whatever and like these people have these crazy situations that i would never have been able to impact and some of those emails were dude you made me find a light you know i can get past this you know some of them are of course help me <laughs> you know help me through this or whatever, which that's, it's personal. You can't really help someone out to go through that kind of situation. You can give them tips, but you have to go through that yourself. But so many of them were these really wonderfully like redemption style emails of, I had this video game addiction. It was ruining my life. I lost my wife. I have no money. But watching your video realize made me realize I have some hope. And 
I always think back to that video when I think about like, why am I doing this on YouTube? Am I playing games just to write essays so that I can force my opinion down th other people's throats and get them to think exactly how I feel? No, like I think about like the notion that this platform can help people. It can hurt them and it could aid in the, the sickening spread of, you know, technology addiction and, and social media if if people just can't get off the thing but at the end of the road for the right person even if it's just one person like you can you can help someone and dude that video i think that's the video that i'm most proud of because it pretty much knocks on everything you just said in regards to the the weird the society that we live in and the the troubles that you can find yourself in viewer or creator on this platform, dude. You should be giving Ted talks. That was the most inspirational shit that's ever been said on the show. You got us captivated and the audience. Seriously. <laughs> <laughs> that I give that credit to my, uh, MBA program where I had to weekly give giant presentations in front of CEOs and hundreds of, Harvard grad faculty members. That shit was scary. Talking to a couple lads on the internet, it's not too bad. Well, I mean, I'm really thankful you did. <laughs> well, I think <laughs> everyone is. What's uh? So for your your videos coming up, I I suppose I think maybe it was asked before any plans i guess or just kind of seeing where the wind takes you or you're gonna experiment with some new things or kind of keep a common thread going yeah that's a good question um i think some people have or know that i've returned to full-time work um different job but same industry same actually this exact same position ironically so my needs on youtube are not driven financially anymore so Everything I put forward on this channel or on my channel going forward is 100% passion. It's only what I want to do. It's only the things that are going to make me happy. There's been some experimentation. Um, I've got this idea. Speaking of food, I've got this idea of creating this um, short series called Gamer Food. And I've got some recipes that I've developed that take unhealthy foods and make them healthy. I call them gamer foods because I think gamers should be eating healthy given our sometimes poor eating habits, poor posture, poor nutrition yeah, and stuff like that. Yeah, not eating dirty. The sedentary nature of video games yeah. is too. Yeah, I don't want to stereotype people um, and put people in buckets, but I think- Oh, that's just why was... I need this series to exist for my health. <laughs> I would be interested in it as well. I cook I, I for myself, what. but I'd love to get some insight on that sort of thing. Yeah, so I filmed the first episode and um, it just didn't come out the way I wanted it to. So I put it on a back burner, but I've got these recipes for chocolate cake, pancakes, rice. And I want to do like a short playlist on my channel where you can find like basically a recipe book and you can cook along with me. It would be much, much less formal than the restaurant style videos with all the sexy food porn, slow motion stuff. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, I was I was just about to say it, we we were kind of saying when we watch these videos, I was like, man, this is such high stuff that I wonder how approachable it is for the you know the average person. Yeah. But if he kind of lowered it down to the rest of our level and Baked did like beans. a gamer <laughs> cook, yeah, a gamer cooking kind of thing that people yeah. could really do with you know more typical stuff, I think there'd be a really big interest in that uh, potentially because I can't think of anybody else who does it. Yeah, I mean, that was the original design for the food stuff anyway, was to do something no one else did. But um, what I've realized with filming off of a webcam and on an actual camera in an actual location, like a kitchen, it's way more challenging than you really think in terms of lighting and cinematography. Like to shoot a high quality kitchen demo or like a food commercial in an industrial kitchen or a home kitchen, it requires a tremendous amount of work. Just moving the damn camera around, tripods, you know, the islands in the way, you got to reposition lights, 
Um, is the is the shot uh, backlit? Is there enough exposure? What's the depth of field? Can I slow motion this shot? Is there enough light? Like all of that stuff gets factored in, which creates an incredibly time consuming process for the, uh, the two videos I've done. Basically, the the ten minute videos you guys have seen took me about eight hours. Um, fucking God forbid the food's cold at the end. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> you, you got to film the thing, right? So like half the food's cold. Um, yeah, it's just kind of a mess. I would it, like to do a, a less formal great. version of, the, of this particular idea, though, to, to talk to your point or to speak to your point. It will all, all that work does pay off. There's like I said, yeah. going back to stuff and then looking at your new stuff it is a night and day difference. It looks professionally done. Um, nice with the cameras and the way that it's shot and the way that it's set up. Um, it's just from like watching your old videos. Cause I found out about you around 2017. I think I, one of your first videos that I saw was something about shadow of war. I can't remember exactly what it was off the top of my head, but something around there and comparing it to now, I mean, it takes some serious uh, introspective thinking to really, see the flaws in your own work and then make it better because there's so many people who just arrogantly think that whatever they're doing is perfect and they don't need to change anything. But to see you actually improve your content by light years is insane. So and refreshing to you see. Should be, you should be extremely proud of all the really hard work that you're clearly putting into your new content because it's oh. really great, man. I think, I think what drives me is probably what drives every single YouTuber. You know, I think we like to create our videos and then watch them. Is it just me or? Well, oh, I, um, I, I, I don't know so YouTuber does that. You um, work all yeah. this time on it and then finally, days later, you get to watch your creation. It's like, okay, cool. Like this, sitting down to watch the video is like one of the reasons you do it. Well, and I the, think that applies to the quote unquote, the right kind of YouTuber who isn't doing it just for the money, who isn't doing it just because they feel like they're trapped in this job they don't want to do. Because I think a lot of people, once they make it to where it's viable on YouTube, they think that that's the ultimate job to have. There's nothing that's better than doing that. And so the idea of stepping back from that and doing something else doesn't even really occur to them as an option. Yeah, I'll tell you what, man. <laughs> Life is... YouTube is not the end of the world. You know, in my opinion, the goal of life is to continually self-improve yourself, work out so you're healthy, you can live long, enjoy the people around you, share good times with those you love, eat well, you know, don't, don't, don't grow old and die young. And, you know, people, it's a, people lose you. So there's life beyond YouTube. And for me, it's based around health and sharing good times and stuff like that. So try to reflect that in the videos I make, um, as well as try to, you know, improve myself. I recently did a video on, well, it's a pending video on Detroit Become Human. It's a retrospective uh, game I replayed this year. And um, in 2017, to your point, Wolf, I probably would have barfed out a, why Detroit Become Human is the worst game ever, or why you should hate this game, or whatever. <laughs> and I would just barfed it out and put it on YouTube, and that would be the end of it. I would have never thought about it again. But I've been working on this video for about 20, uh, 20 days off and on. I rewrote the entire script, which is rare for me. It's kind of to your point of trying to be the best you can be. And um, it's at this point, it's 22 minutes long. It's way longer than I wanted it to be. But like, I'm proud of it. And I think that's the, really the goal that if you're a YouTuber out there, you might not realize this at the time. You know, you might be very financially driven. Oh, the viewership, all oh, the money. Eventually that's going to end or it's going to plateau. And what you're going to be left with is your own happiness. So like now I'm trying to work towards shit, man. Can I make this video? Like, can I make this video worth my viewers time? Like, that's the only question right now for me. You, Does this yeah. make me happy? You couldn't and be talking to like the most most suitable audience ever. You just told us that you're redrafting, your video's getting longer, that you, you care about how people are going to react to it. Re is, we, this is ecstasy to us. <laughs> we well, it's, it. not about, it's not about me. It's, it's, does my viewer, who is going to sit down for 15 minutes, take the time out of their day 
to watch my shit. Is my shit worthy of it? Because if the answer is no, I'm going back to the drawing board. That's what I mean, man. Like you just put everything in, really work at it. And we've seen watch like, your videos, like, though. Sorry to cut you off, dude. I gotta watch your guys' videos because I gotta learn how to do a long form essay. <laughs> <laughs> maybe not 10 hours maybe yeah i was yeah. gonna say you could probably start with someone else i uh i spent like <laughs> tips on how to push it up to 30 minutes all right i think it's if, weird if you have a long video it means you've got stuff to say and that's not a bad thing however i am a very like i'm a man of very like, i don't talk a lot although I, I seem to be chatting this particular podcast i don't know why but i'm usually a man of very few words and I'm actually quite the introvert, even though my schooling forced me into being an extrovert. And my current job requires me to talk to a lot of people who make a lot of money, but I'm naturally an introvert. So like, it's very difficult for me to open Google Drive. It's probably different for you, Rags or Mauler, where you've, you've watched or played some piece of content and you see that blinking line. Okay, this is where I start. It's very difficult for me to think about adding more because I've always been a, a subtraction kind of guy. Yes. If that makes sense. Like I like conciseness. I like things that come to a natural arc, whether it's long or short. Sometimes if it's shorter, it's it's less bogged down, it's less clumsy. But like learning to write longer is probably a direction I'll start to go in, especially with you know some of these upcoming games like um like i haven't played the last of us part two or cyberpunk 2077 um a simulation game like detroit control where there is space for you to explore your ideas because let's be honest it's not really applicable for a lot of games action games I'm sure you can tell you can talk about a call of duty campaign for a good bit but can you talk about a racing game all that in depth, not really. So it kind of depends on what games you gravitate towards. And in this moment, I seem to be gravitating towards RPGs and adventure games. So it might allow me to to expand my ideas beyond my comfort 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 zone, as I said before, was conciseness, if that makes sense. Yeah. Um I think that generally we definitely err on the side of say it if you we say it if you need to say it don't waste time but sometimes you just have a lot of things to say and sometimes that means depending on what you're covering maybe there is a lot to say about something and do the topics justice I suppose um if if you're if you're covering something that you think is owed a lot of an explanation Better to say it all and have it be long instead of not giving people enough. If it's too long, people can always go back and finish it. But if there's make, not enough, then after you finish it, you know, what then? It's over. You make a good point when you say um, do the subject material justice, which I think is what clouded my videos for a long time. And it continues to cloud and, and really fuck up a lot of people's content on YouTube is we're not respecting what we're actually using. You know, there's a lot of companies out there. Sure, there's companies out there that put shitty games out. But if you're going to be covering a game that people have toiled over, sleepless nights, you know. Yeah, that's a good way to look at long, it. For years. Like, you owe that property the respect, just like you owe it to your viewers to do it right, whether it's long or short. Um, it's just, for me, an expert... Uh, process these days of trying to figure out how long I want my videos, how short I want them, you know? It's kind of dependent on every game. Well, some people sort of get into the, I think they get into the cycle of, well, I just got to crap out this video for this one thing. Oh, this game came out. I just got to put out a video. Oh, this game came out. I, I just got to put out a video. I just, it, it just needs to get done. I got to make a video for it. They feel like they do it as an obligation to a schedule instead of really sitting down and taking the time and being like, okay. This is a game. I need to sit down, play it, absorb it, take notes. And because a lot of people, like even if you're not a big YouTuber and a thousand people watch your video, it's like, well, maybe, you know, 10, 15, 20, 100 people 
out of that, you know, it's sixty dollars to them, and that's a lot of money to people. So you don't want to you don't want to steer steer people wrong. Yeah, the, there's a great divide between high quality content and crap on YouTube. Oh yes, yes sir. Um, it's just it's got to be honest, man. I'm guilty as charged. I put a lot of garbage out on YouTube for for a good amount of time. Probably a, probably an entire year. Some of my content was garbage. Like I won't even go back and watch my videos. In fact, I deleted so many of them. But it's like. I don't know what you guys are opinion of with COVID is and, and what, what seems I don't to like be. it. Well, I mean, like the <laughs> I'm anti COVID. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to die either. But in, t- in terms of like YouTube, it seems like there's this. The viewership is being spread thin because a lot more people are coming on. I mean, we have Brie Larson making videos. Steph Curry um, movie stars are creating YouTube videos these days, which the supply and demand can dictate that perhaps unless you have the community to back it up, you're going to get a smaller slice of the pie, right? Which can back to your point, push people to, to really gr- grasp onto this idea that this is an obligation because th- my life depends on it. I think, which kind of circles back to the point of there's a lot of garbage on YouTube and you have to sift through it. If you, if you really want to find the good stuff, yeah, sometimes I, I definitely feel that way. I feel like to really find the good stuff, there's so much, uh, so much of it is just like middle of the road, average, passable, kind of, you know, five out of 10 stuff. It's to find a YouTuber that has some real, not just passion, because there's a lot of passionate YouTubers who just aren't good. Uh, but to find a passionate YouTuber who's really good and insightful about things, it's not always, you know, it, Sometimes it feels like a diamond in the rough. And it, you want to encourage people to support those YouTubers who do that. Um, well, system, unfortunately, has something to say about that, Rags. Yeah. The algorithm YouTube and the crazy automatic robot, not to mention the rampant demonetization, copyright strikes, and just general uh, shatakery of the notification system. Dude, <sighs> the, the bot... That is some nut shit. Like I, I hate the bot. I, Ugh. I was curious, um, because th- 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 like someone was like, "Oh, by the way, TFA Part Three managed to get over a million. And I was like, "Oh, I actually wasn't expecting to," because I feel like interest in that series might have waned a bit. But I was like, "Oh, that's cool." And I checked analytics. I was like, "What is going on then? Like, is it still getting rotated?" And the interesting thing is that was in my top rotation, like according to the bot. Second was a video that was twenty minutes long that I made like three years ago, where I was responding to someone talking about horror games. I was like, why the fuck is... What? That's been popping up in my recommended. Why? By the way, What's video? going on? Oh, yeah. The I one that's that the game. And you loads of people have been job. watching it on my channel and commenting. And I'm like, I don't, I can't even remember what I said in that video. <laughs> what's what's it, going on? The, uh, the shotgun thumbnail? Yes. Yeah, yeah. And, um, yeah, it's been popping up for me. And it's and nuts because the, U- the YouTube bot can literally create and destroy careers at, at a whim. Like, Absolutely. It's insane. And imagine that video. sword of Damocles floating above you when you're trying to make a career out of this shit. <laughs> it's like, cool. I was watching a video, and the F-bomb must have been rolled. It was like a Rainbow Six Siege video, highlight video. Not scripted, just gameplay audio, right? F-bomb is thrown out at least 50 times in this video. Monetized. <laughs> There's yeah. no rules on YouTube. Copyright strikes and demonetization seem to happen at random. Videos are promoted for what reason? Who knows? I don't think they really have the system down YouTube. Oh, hell to no. To any degree of predictability. And I saw a meme video posted just a few days ago from a channel that only has like 2,000 subs and it had a million views after a day. And it's like, it was a funny video, but I don't know how the hell it got that many views in such a short amount of time from such a small YouTuber. YouTube's fucking broken. It is. Um, I remember I, I did a response to Angry Joe once, and I quoted him, and his quote was part of the video title, and the video got demonetized because of that quote. But he was allowed to have that quote said over and over and over in his video, and he was monetized. 
there is yeah, there, there is no it's basically random when people ask me what's the bot like i it's it's indistinguishable from randomness which is the problem uh you just never know you just never know what'll pass and what'll fail i agree and that's and, and that's demoralizing when you work really hard on something and then you put it in the system and it's like uh you don't get to make money yes oh thanks so much i was gonna say by the way we got um catastrophica and sophistic autistic made these they they are you tone <laughs> wait what in the uh in the <laughs> it's posted in the chat you should be able to see them oh shit that's you just made this Oh, these these were sent to me ahead of time because uh, I think well everyone was sure you were coming on. <laughs> they, they they all I think they all wanted it, so uh, they drew it. The, but I can guarantee you, especially after how this has gone, that you're going to be getting uh, probably a bit of fan art made. Uh, oh, I need a new YouTube thumbnail. I can guarantee you that there's oh. going to be some, like Van Gogh <laughs> level. My way. To you. The white Samauri has really uh, taken <laughs> over with a lot of the meme stuff. Hey, been big. hey bro, that's what's coming eventually, bro. White Samurai. <laughs> ninja, dude. dude, we'll be watching. You better that. believe I'm doing another one of those trailers. <laughs> Can I, by the way, the like our favorite quote from you is uh, when you're talking about God of War and you show the bit where uh, Kratos is grabbing Poseidon and you describe it as these clown boy? Yeah. You guess clown boy? Where yep. where did that come <laughs> from, dude? Like clown boy? That shit's hilarious. <laughs> I've never that, heard it before. That's just something I say. Like a like, little clown boy. It's it's like it's, it's everywhere in our community. Rolled off the tongue so naturally. Just it's, if anyone says anything to you that you don't like, clown. Just, that's clown it. Just drop boy. the clown. It's over. <laughs> Can't come clown. back from it. It's um, it's when you combine certain words and you're just blown away by how effective it sounds. Like little clown boy, it's like, oh my god, that is wonderful. It's like, wow, it's done. Oh, Shut so down. We're on the topic of asking questions like that, I always wanted to know what's the origin behind the name Downward Thrust. So yeah, that's a yeah, good question. question. <laughs> I ex I actually explained it to me, or I I explained it to. <laughs> <laughs> I hope you know. I to myself in the mirror <laughs> while I was crying late at night one night. I um, agreed with me. <laughs> I made a vlog a long time ago. Uh, not many people saw it, but the name was based off of the down thrust move of Zelda 2. Oh. So in Zelda 2, you had the up strike ability and you had the down thrust, which you could get, I think, in one of the dungeons or... I think you learn it from like a townsperson or whatever. And like, that was my favorite move ever because you could like kill enemies, like fucking just boom. Little did I know at the time, the, the move name was down thrust. So there I was starting my YouTube channel, I, I, figuring the name was downward thrust when it was down thrust. So to this day, I wish I would have looked it up because that's not the name of the move. I've down, I, downward thrust sounds better. Downward thrust does sound I mean, better. It does, it does work, thrust. and you can totally count for that. You can be like, "Yeah, I took it and I changed it a little bit." Yeah, you can say you did that on purpose. You're fine. Well, <laughs> no, I, I honestly think that it would be just—it's a funny little bit of lore to say, like, "Yeah, it came from this. It was a mistake." But I think downward thrust. Honestly, sounds better as a name for a YouTube channel. Oh, definitely. Down thrust. Well, hey, it's probably better to Nintendo not coming after me for copyright or nothing. You know, <laughs> I don't know if they can copyright down thrust, but you never know these That's days. Some, I will Nintendo let, I will let Fredo uh, drew that one. It's just you in the Pokemon universe. What's my what? Okay, ask that gentleman. What is my Pokemon of choice? That's a oh, huge question. Surely that would be for you to decide, right? I don't know. No, no, that's for the creator. All right, you heard him. Please say Arcanine. By the way, if any of your, uh, if anyone in the chat has a question for me, if you feel feel free, throw them. Yeah, we way. can we can do that if you want. Um, I don't yeah. know how much time do you Blabbering have now. On about, um, probably like half an hour. Let's do it. Let's let's do it. Now well, we did do wanna, into some Q and A. Keep an eye that on is that. A, do you want to pull questions out of chat yourself, or do you want us to just try and find some? No, you go ahead. All right, chat. All right, yeah. Get your best questions and posts. We'll see what we can do. Yeah. Don't fuck this up. 
favorite movies? Oh, yeah. My favorite movie of all time is uh, Interstellar, followed pretty closely by Inception. Huh. Okay. Hey, I, know, I like Inception. I know a lot of people are pretty divisive <laughs> about Interstellar. Um, I don't know what you mean. For various, <laughs> various reasons, but uh, <laughs> I'm a space junkie. Oh. And that, that movie was just phenomenal. Uh, runners up, Last Samurai, anything by Van Damme, Bloodsport. Last Samurai is great. Yeah. I really like Last that Samurai movie. was the only movie to ever make me cry. I was sitting in a movie theater by myself. The only video I went to by you myself. You cried during cry. Interstellar. Nah, man. Dude, the okay. scene with he sees his kid growing up, that didn't get you? No. Nah. No. Nah. Man, so all right. Insane, man. Yeah, all right. Well, I fair enough. I mean, maybe my girlfriend just broke up with me that day, which is why I was in the theater by myself. Um, <laughs> oh. Ooh. Which is a. Which is, a, I guess, a question for you guys, too. Anyone ever, you know, we we're talking about video game addiction earlier. How many girlfriends have you guys lost to video games? Let's just be real. Um, none. Yeah, like, honestly, uh, if, if I'm going to commit with a girlfriend, I'm like, she's getting, she's getting a lot of time, uh, usually. Yeah, but I, oh. I don't see myself. I'm not the girlfriend, boyfriend type, really. It's just not sort of my deal the romantic relationship at least currently you know people change over time but i never saw myself as that kind of person where my personality would mesh with that sort of relationship so i've kept things pretty simple and always kept my been upfront about that sort of stuff mm -hmm. just tell us how you really feel mr tender <laughs> <laughs> but i could see how it could be um you know it competing for attention if, if you do have a problem with you know video games or really any addiction then i could see how that could be a huge deal to have to i mean it's a terrible sort of thing because like they're designed day after day to be that to get more players to get more success because it's a market to thrive and of course i just it's like we try and separate it into like ethical and non-ethical ways of making your game satisfying to play and thus you know when it gets a little bit more Deeper down, it's like how addictive. In, in the same way that gambling, oh, you guys remember that the uh, CS:GO gambling, that whole thing. Oh yeah, yeah, that thing yeah. that happened. That was a big thing when it came out. Yeah. <laughs> Too ugly for dating. Sorry. Oh, chat. <laughs> <laughs> oh, even Hitler That's had his Eva cheer true, up. Man, have some confidence. Pluck Jim your eyebrows. Sterling's married. Matt Jarbo's married. Like, come on. Yeah. <laughs> Everyone's got something to offer. Yeah. Oh, so uh, I, I guess this is if you have questions, uh, I quick one. Um, what games have you been playing recently that you like? So I just beat Detroit Become Human uh, for the second or third time, which I was talking about earlier in terms of uh, the retrospective. Um, I just beat uh, Splinter Cell Chaos Theory again. I missed out on The Last of Us Part 2. Um, I really want to play that game in 60 frames per second. And I know a remaster is coming for the PS5. So deciding to hold back on that. I missed Ghost of Tsushima. But currently I'm just playing like really old games. Deus Ex, Mankind Divided, I just finished. I've been That's playing a lot of Rainbow Six Siege. Oh, it's a good game. But nothing like, nothing new. I gotcha. I'm the same way. A lot of the games I play are... Not necessarily new, just ones I happen to get into and mainstays I could always go back to. All reliables. What have you guys been playing? Good question. Um, I, I've been playing uh, Killing Floor 2. Uh, uh, Fall Guys. Guild Wars I've been 2. wanting to try Fall Guys, actually. Dude, we should, uh, we should do a gaming with that, all right? We should do it. I'm, I'm down for a co-op sesh. Defo. Um, oh, that would be fun. You said uh, you meant you meant you're you're interested in playing The Last of Us Two at some point, right? You haven't played it yet. Yeah, The Last of Us is actually my favorite game of all time. And oh man, dude. Well, okay, no spoilers, I really anybody. Should. I will love to know what your thoughts are on Last of Us Two when you finish it. Man, I mean, I I go into media blackout mode when a game comes out that I'm going to be interested in. I read nothing. I I watch no previews. I truly believe. The magic of a video game experience is you go in and know nothing about it and just oh, being yeah. surprised. I agree. But goddamn, 
did I see some shit? <laughs> a, lot people, a lot of people are a lot of people feel a certain way. That's uh Oh my god. Did I see some stuff? No nothing, no spoilers, but good god, the political socialism drama spewing forth from everyone like t- Count Dooku is just I don't know. <laughs> it's, huh. it's intense, man. Yeah. I don't know. It's like, am I supposed to be worried at this point? Well, we wouldn't want to say, right? We'll we'll not we'll not say anything. You just you want you go in there, dude. I would love it if you streamed it. By the way, I would watch the shit out of that. That would Dream be since Warframe, two thousand seventeen. I feel like I'm a bad streamer. <laughs> <laughs> I would love to see y'all. Right I and this isn't to say I'm not indicative of any direction here. I would love to see reactions to certain portions of Last of Us Two. It would genuinely be a treasure. I'd have to play it first. Oh, well, maybe I don't know if you'd be willing to like record it offline as you play through it and then supercut it or something. I would watch the shit out of that. Just saying. <laughs> uh, uh, oh, oh! Someone's I'm asking. Uh, do you think uh, if Last of Us Two or Last of Us is big with you? Uh, do you think Joel's a beloved character? <laughs> I would only be able to answer that in the context of the first game. Go for it. Yeah, that's all you need. That's that's all you need for uh, what I what I liked. What I liked about um, The Last of Us was that it was fairly enigmatic, in the sense that Joel started off as someone relatable, albeit his circumstance was unreachable at this point. You know, zombie apocalypse or whatever daughter gets shot by the guard um but the transitionary arc of his character was something i fell in love with because he started off fairly prickly towards ellie right (laughs) yeah it was cliche in terms of uh doesn't like her now likes her later but um the ending of the last of us was when i started to not like joel Obviously, there were some moments before in the hospital, you know, with the decision. You know, Last of Us is a linear game, so you have no choice, right? Um, don't want to spoil it for anyone who hasn't seen, who hasn't played the game, but um, the choices he made and and how it was presented on the screen. I think now, it's okay to spoil it for this crowd of ours. Where yeah, don't worry about that. Yeah, well, let me can, just you say go for it here. Let me just say I like Joel, but then I didn't like Joel. That's mm. pretty much the best. Really interesting. I mean, the the causation of what he does, you know, his actions, the consequence, or I guess a better way to put it is the the underlying reasons for why he does what he does at the end of The Last of Us is shocking, but it's relatable. But that doesn't mean it's wrong. It doesn't mean that's the right thing ethically to do. And I think gamers play games that they can connect to morally value wise ethics, right? What would, what can I connect with in terms of a character? Does this make sense? Can I put myself in that, sh- in those shoes? And what w- what he did at the end of the game disconnected me from that because that's what I, I would never have done. Really? I mean, yeah, it's a fair reaction. Well, I could understand it, but it's fucked up. You play the second one, then we can talk. <laughs> we'll go. We can yeah. go in depth. We'll talk all about. I'll just Lost say that. Too. I'll just say no. I don't like Joel as much as I I did when the game started. Hmm. It's still, still, what you consider your favorite game? Yeah, definitely. Um, I remember playing The Last of Us when I was, um, I think it was the first year of my grad program, and. My roommate had just gone out for the night and it was just me. It was raining. So like the mood was ripe for this kind of game. And I put it on. I beat the game pretty much in almost in one sitting. And it's rare for me to divulge into that kind of behavior because generally like I'll pick up a game for an hour or so. I'll put it down kind of guy. But for me to plow through that entire experience, in that environment, there there was just something that happened, I guess, in that room late at night. Could, I connected to the story for whatever reason. Doesn't really matter, but yeah, that's my favorite game for sure. 
Yeah, I think it's a great choice. Uh, another question came up. Um, do you have a favorite faction from 40k? Uh, no, I don't play too many Warhammer games. Is that... Oh, they said the... based on your icon, that... so I assumed. My icon? Yeah, but they might have been mistaken, I guess, or... Yeah, what is the that... icon from? The, pic the picture right now in my mm -hmm. bubble? Yeah. That's a custom drawing that was Ooh. made for my channel by oh. some chick in Kazakhstan, actually. <laughs> I hired some chick on Up Upwork? I think it's Upwork. Gave her like $100. I said, I want a guy in a cloak thrusting down with a sword. And this is what she drew me. So unfortunately, I don't have uh, too much to share about the Warhammer universe. This is a custom drawing. Uh, let's see. Oh. Uh, someone's asking favorite anime? Not into man. I'm not into anime. Good man. <laughs> um, but... I wouldn't even know where to start. Scroll in here. <laughs> scene. Do you have a favorite genre for music or band? Um, yeah. I generally listen to two types of music. Either like really dirty rap or um, what they call finger style guitar, which is the style of guitar I play. And that kind of music doesn't have any vocals. So if you kind of want to look it up, you can search like Andy McKee to kind of see what I'm talking about. It's basically like a one man army style on the guitar where you're playing melodies and rhythms and you're slapping the guitar with your hand to create percussion as like an all encompassing style of playing music. And I find it very attractive to listen to. So I think those are the two styles for me. Pretty, uh, pretty different. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, what is your workout routine? Uh, my workout routine is, is new because COVID and I had to cancel my gym membership. Um, yeah. The cool thing about COVID actually is I started calisthenics, which completely changed my perception of working out. Because when I first started working out when I was about 22, I got pretty jacked. But I didn't get ripped. I got big. And there's a big difference. Um, my <laughs> it's funny because looking back, I grew up a, sk a skinny kid. But when I first started working out, I was slamming the bench press, you know, and I was eating 5,000 calories a day. And a, <laughs> boy, you do not want to know my diet, by the way. It was disgusting. Filled with uh, protein shakes with raw eggs, Rocky Balboa style of spaghetti with meatball, Ooh, man. peanut butter sandwiches every two hours. It was pretty nasty. So I got jacked, but I wasn't healthy. COVID, you know, years later, took away the gym for me. And it pretty much almost kind of like made me see the light in terms of like doing body weight over weights, basically. Um, what and what do you I'm, mean body weight over? So, yeah. So like when you when you go through your life lifting weights, you you don't actually train your body to be stronger or more flexible or more or more mobile. You're just increasing weight, whether you're compensating during those movements, your form sucks. If you can get the bar, basically your entire objective is to get the bar, you know, above your head or whatever. You know, you're pushing the bar, you're pulling the bar. Calisthenics. So it's not like clickable strength? No, because calisthenics allows you to control weight versus just push weight. And it, it develops like a more lean physique because you have less weight to push around, but you're, you have to control not just your body weight, but your own flexibility. And you have to be mobile enough to complete some of the moves, like let's say a planche or a headstand or a handstand or like a scapula push-up, for instance. So like my routine these days, to go back to your question, is, is basically like a full body calisthenics workout three days a week for about 30 minutes 
focusing on body weight strength, flexibility, and um, being mobile because, you know, gamers don't exactly have the best hobby to promote good health with our bodies. Sitting yeah. down is not very good for us. So um, if I have any advice for like people who want to get into working out who are gamers, it's you need, you got to get flexible and mobile. So push-ups, um, dips, squats, lunges, L-sits, um, hollow bodies, stuff that's actually going to make you fit and strong and flexible, not just the ability to push weight around. Mm -hmm. Way so, too long-winded. Sorry about that. No, I, no, it's good advice to have, um, especially nowadays where a lot of people are inside, doubly so. But if let's say someone wants to put a set aside just a little bit of time every day, you know, 10, 15 minutes or whatever to do a little do do a little workout. Uh, what would you what would you say is the best idea for, you know, a gamer who just wants to put aside a little bit of time every day? Something that's useful. I would say watch my most recent video called How to Be a Healthy Gamer, which has Excellent. a complete calisthenics workout. Shameless plug um, that you can do oh, pretty much every day. Go for it. Yeah. I just did. Do you um? <laughs> do you uh? So you you said you're not uh, interested in like anime. What about just TV shows in general? A lot of people are asking. Have you heard of Ad Avatar: The Last Airbender? Have you watched that? No. Um. I just got done watching Space Force, which I thought was fantastic. That's uh, Steve Carell, right? So, yeah. yeah. I haven't watched Airbender. Maybe you guys can fill me in on on what it's about. Is it like hardcore anime or is it? No, great More entry weird. level for like uh, shows of of. I don't know. I don't know if it is anime or not. I don't. Know, like, I don't know. If I it would qualifies. say that it's anime. It certainly. It looks like it. It's got a lot of the the tropes of it in there. Um, it's stylized in the way of it. Yeah. People I, I are like really gatekeepy with like, oh, it's not really anime because it's not made in Japan, even though it has everything in common with any other anime. It's pretty much anime. There's almost nothing distinguishable from it and anything else that you find in typical anime from my experience yeah i i would love to watch it i just have such a backlog of stuff since i got netflix like i've been watching uh the last dance with michael jordan i play in a competitive basketball team well i did before covid but like i like sports documentaries um game of thrones was phenomenal until they fucked it up <laughs> we never did get around to talk. Yeah, about we, we got to talk about this Dude, before I go. That is the um, perfect summary. It was great until they fucked it up. <laughs> um, I'm not the best person to talk about it, but like Game of Thrones was phenomenal for seasons upon seasons. Like what they were able to do with the cinematography and the layering of the, the network of the relationships between the characters and the surprise moments. The, and just the sheer cinematography, the acting, the music, the overarching meta narrative, just splicing through all those personal stories. I could not pull myself away. Like, it, dude, it was set easily to be the season. greatest TV show of all time if they had just managed to fucking keep it going. Like, the, the quality they'd set. If they had just yeah. replaced the writers. At what point did it turmoil down into a raging fire uh you could pick a few points in the final season but um i really thought when daenerys flew over <laughs> king's landing and <laughs> killed everybody <laughs> completely ruined what do you everything mean? That's to that's about totally her, in her character. character she's always been established to kill innocent women and children that's her thing yeah since the origins of her character she was leading up to the moment where she murdered everyone in the show it, obviously, but like that moment ruined the greatest show on TV. I think my personal moment when I was like, all right, I, you killed it for me was uh, when Arya killed the Night King. Well, that yeah. whole in general, but I mean, I was like waiting for Jon Snow to have an actual fight with the Night King and then Arya just like boops into existence out of nowhere and stabs him and that's it well, was it just was it just because they wanted that surprise factor 
Yeah, they've oh, said yeah. that. They've said that nobody like, was thinking it was going to be Arya. They said a lot of weird shit as to like justify it, and they were, and then eventually they started saying like it always made sense. Arya was always going to be the one, and they show that clip where Melisandre says, "You'll close eyes of all colors, like greed eyes, blue eyes." And it's like oh, the Night King has yeah. blue eyes. I get, oh my god, it's f thoroughly foreshadowed. <laughs> like what the fuck? <laughs> Dude, oh, it was that conversation by the time that happened. Oh, it was it was worse than the ending of Dexter. It was worse than anything I had experienced like ever. And my girlfriend and I were sitting on the couch, staring aghast. Fuck. <laughs> I think I had to do CPR on her at some point. Did you? <laughs> What did you, did you have any comment on their um the formation the fortifications with their armies and uh, the castle? Any any thoughts there? No, uh, I mean, I'm not too terribly inquisitive when it comes to. Did you think it was details? amazing that they like, ran their cavalry first into a crowd of zombies? Oh, they're uh, Rocky. Okay, that's the first stupid thing about that scene. <laughs> And then they're catapulted. Let's go ahead and just send a, a third of our army <laughs> into the darkness where there are murderers waiting. Charge. It's it's <laughs> actually smart. baffling because the the way you use cavalry, that's like the opposite of how you use cavalry. Like there's no and they have all like the greatest minds in Westeros working together to, to create like the best plan. And then you see that their front line is trebuchets. Um <laughs> not the greatest idea. <laughs> you may only mention one time. the trebuchets stopped firing after the first volley I think which is cool that's exactly what you want to do is have all your archers and trebuchet stop firing when the enemies are in range makes sense too late for those trebuchets as soon as I fucking put them on the front. Yeah, well, so, yeah, once once uh, she stabbed the Night King, because uh, I was in a call with Wolf watching it, and it was like, a, oh, yay, we did it, we beat the bad guys, and it was like, wait a minute. Hmm. Yeah, what <laughs> I didn't think about the, the, the fight between the mountain and the hound. Funny. In the, in the tower that was melting around them i feel like i was my investment was thoroughly destroyed at that point anyway so just watching it all happen it just felt weird like i just like and funny the mouth, like takes kyburn and like breaks his head and throws him on a rock and that's just the end of that whole character that was so funny like it's, <laughs> it's <laughs> just just really, it, it tugs at th you know underlying thematic you know the fire scene from the, the first time we see the hound or whatever but like good god a little bit over the top well i'm glad you liked it <laughs> yeah Got my popcorn out. did you like all the walking in the last episode oh, yeah, was... did you like how john snow's entire character arc resulted in but i don't want it She's my queen. Dude, what do you mean? That was perfect. That was Jon Snow. Don't That's you what know the Jon Snow I've always known. He's a dog. He's not a leader. He doesn't have wow. his own mind. Wow. Come oh, on. Yeah. All he wants is that, uh, you know, his, his aunt. Oh, we've got, we got a request, actually, and that's a pretty fair one. Do you guys remember the meme that Lil Potato made? In King's Landing, do you remember that shit? I oh. believe I do. Um, I this. It's okay. Wait, hang on. <laughs> Carry on a sec. I'll set it up. All right. Um. Yeah, I know when the the I never got into Game of Thrones until Mahler dragged me in. I th I think I was his uh, I was his emotional support animal. Yes. Uh, he was very very distraught over what happened. Uh, and I could certainly see why. Um. I have legitimate sympathy for people who were super invested into that show and then watch that happen. That must have been really rough uh, with with how long it took to get there, especially so much yeah. investment built up over so long. 
And I think the fact that basically nobody talks about that show anymore sure is interesting, you know? Sure is interesting. Um, is everyone in? I think we're copyright free on this video. I'll do what Let I can. Let me. Gonna... I'm ready. This is, um... I'm popping in now. Here we go. All right, here we go. Um, before I let it play fully, you don't have to understand it. It's, uh, <laughs> it's just, some of the memes we see from our community, we don't even quite understand them, but holy shit, you'll probably find this amusing. I'm not sure that that's inherently that much of a bad thing. Carol's flat. I mean, as a character. Is that like a personal attack or something? Again, don't worry, you won't understand all of it. <laughs> you also have to tell me about these food references with the McChuros. Is it supposed to be playing the ad? The ad? No, 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 uh, hang on. Yeah, it's it's playing the, it's playing the ad for me. Is it up it's now for you? It's not playing the meme. The uh, no, let me reload. It's supposed to be very... I was about to be very, very confused here. Here we go. Oh. There it is. Yes. Sweet. Okay, I'll just skip. You haven't missed anything, don't worry. At this point, there's literally no escape. That's just pathetic to me. You two are pathetic. You're subhuman, honestly. <laughs> oh, good lord, what's this? What the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> what the fuck? Turns into a thing I forgot about. Fuck no, bitch. <laughs> <laughs> Where the hell did you come from? So, um, here's the thing. It's <laughs> destructive. <laughs> By the way, can I just say one thing? Yeah. Whoever made that 18 minute video. Oh, you've seen that? About the e -fat, I watched that. And I oh have to God. say, th that was fantastic. And whoever <laughs> made that, it was very talented and creative. Dude, it's, it's what we, we could only dub as a, as a Hollywood level meme video. <laughs> it's insane. I had no idea who those people were, what was going on. What the heck the McChicken Nuggets were for? <laughs> I don't know what the food references are, but damn, that was some high quality shit. Um, yeah. Well, <laughs> did you like the little clown boys you punched Pennywise in the face? It's fucking classic, dude. Really encapsulating the most important things about me. You'll ha you have no <laughs> idea how happy you've just made several of the people who made that video. By the way, I had no idea you'd see that. Can I ask Actually, why I'm? Why I'm Ant Man though? Was there uh, some decision that was reached, or the problem is we have so many characters in the EFAB community to spread across. I, I don't know what the decision making process was, but um, you know, do, do you do you like Ant Man? Do you not? Or I'm, I like it. I'm just wondering oh, why. Oh, I don't <laughs> know. Uh... <laughs> I, I will accept it. You likey likey. Some... I likey likey. <laughs> Somebody sent this. They wanted me to show this to you. They made us uh, about our conversation today. Oh, great. It's me in five years. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, need, I need to put this on my thumbnail, I think. <laughs> yeah, I think you had a lot of people uh, enraptured. Yeah. I that's pretty, pretty fair to say. Um. It's good to talk about this stuff. I hope I wasn't too preachy or uh, no. You know, we oh, were. Dude, this, is, this has been in terms of some of the subjects we brought up. In terms no. of EFAP highlights, this is uh, this is up there, man. We've had a hundred episodes, and this is up there. Well, shit. Maybe that's uh, my call to bid you guys adieu. I've got to make oh, some course. dinner, but uh, it was an absolute fucking what are you pleasure having? to come in and meet y'all. We're going to have um, vegan burgers and oh. a kale salad. Oh, I'm Go sorry I asked. <laughs> yeah. Hey, man, he's cooking it, so. <laughs> anyway, uh, yeah, it was an absolute honor to, to meet you, chaps, and uh, thanks again for having me. 
the the support from you guys community is awesome um i hope we can maybe uh play a little fall guys at some point i'll do it definitely i gotta buy the game now just to be in on this <laughs> everyone's talking about it so i guess we'll have to see what's up all right yeah thank you Wait, thank you so much for coming on dude seriously yes thank you so pleasure. much you made a lot care. of people's days and i want i want to see can i can i suggest sauron can be one of the people you cook for yeah can we oh. Fuck, damn, I never considered movies. I want you to get creative. What would you cook for Sauron? On the spot right now? It, well, no, I don't want any spoilers. Make that video, dude. I'll watch the shit out of it every time. You, 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 hey, what do you um, the possibilities of <laughs> movies is yeah. endless. I'll just should, you should do like um, a polling system. Just see, what, see what people really want to see, who they want to see guest on your show to get uh, cooked for. Yeah, uh, it's a good idea. But yeah, man. Um, of course, take care. Thank you so much for coming on. It's been a pleasure, and uh, we'll we'll see you again soon. Absolutely. Uh, you guys Thanks so care. much. Take care, guys. Bye. You too. You too see you around. I feel like I met Jesus. Hello, you just listened to a segment of the podcast Every Frame of Pause, or EFAP, hosted by YouTubers Mauler, Rags, and Fringy, and joined by a cycling variety of guests across the internet. They critically analyze media with exhaustive detail while pausing at every single frame. Subscribe to the EFAP channel and catch new episodes on Saturdays, as well as catch their smaller videos reacting to the latest and not-so-greatest movies and TV shows throughout the week. You can also subscribe here to EFAP highlights for the latest shorts, clips, and supercuts also up uploaded throughout the week. Links to all the relevant channels can be found in the description section below, as well as links to their communities on Reddit and Discord. Thanks for watching.